Hey everybody. I think I'm live. Yeah, this is live. Or at least it's live right now. Um I uh I've been sitting here for like 30 minutes trying to muster up the courage to go live with this. Um I just want to warn you, this is going to be really hard to watch. And if you don't want to see me completely break down, you probably should not watch this. Just go find a recap or something. This is going to be hard. I tried to record this in a vlog, but I could not bear to edit it. So I'm just going to do it in a live. I'm just going to say it in a live. And, uh, I'm sorry, I, if I get too upset, I might need to leave the room for a minute. Um, I'm trying not to make a bigger fool of myself than I already have, but I thought that I really, there's something I haven't told you. And... I really don't feel like I can do any kind of healing moving forward type of journey on this channel if I don't tell you the entire truth. And uh Oh, uh I had my therapy today and all I did was talk about this particular thing and I'm very emotionally drained right now. So, oh god, I don't even want to say this because I feel like once I admit this, once I put this out there, then it's real, it's real, it's really happening, and there's no way I can ignore it, there's no way I can pretend it's not real, there's no way I can live in delusion anymore. Oh, God. So I know some of you probably know what I'm going to say already. But there's a reason why I know that Andrew will never try to come back. And it's partially his decision based on his actions. And it's also partially that he's done something that is so fucking horrible that... I could, even me, even me, I could never take him back. I could have forgiven anything. I could have forgiven him having a mistress. I could have forgiven all the lies, all the bullshit, all the cheating, all of it. I could have forgiven any of that, and I would have. But this is fucking unforgivable. Okay, I don't, I'm really afraid to talk about this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh God. All right, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it, we can get it out there. And also, another reason why I don't wanna say it is because once I do, and it's out there and it's real in my mind, then there's, like, there's no way I can take him back. And I mean, I wouldn't, but I don't know, like, some part of me kept thinking, maybe we can sweep this under the rug somehow. Maybe we can find a way, you know. Maybe we could find a way to still be together, but we can't. <sighs> She's pregnant. And she's not just pregnant. She's due in three weeks. <laughs> He's known the whole time. 
He's known since November. The whole time <laughs> that he's been going back and forth between us, he's known. <laughs> he told me that I'll tell you what he told me in a minute. I found out about this on Sunday. So the day after I kicked him out and he left, um, when he was on his way back to Colorado and he sent me that message telling me never to contact him again. Um, it, he also told me some other things. So, four months after we lost August, he impregnated this woman. Four months after our baby died. I'm sorry. Oh, God. And he knew about it. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to come back to me. I legitimately think he was torn apart and didn't know what to do. But he made the final decision on what he was going to do. Which, you know what that is, because he's not here. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit of what he told me, so you can kind of get his point of view. Um... I'm not going to read you everything, obviously, but um, I'll just tell you what he said about this specific thing. It's so hard for me to read this message. He said, I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. It's a boy. <laughs> Sorry, it's a boy. He said, <laughs> by the way, in November, we were actively trying to have a baby. In November, December, January, he knew. He knew she was pregnant while we were actively trying to have a baby, by the way. <laughs> what the fuck was he gonna do if I got pregnant too? Oh, God. So. He said, I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. I can't tell you what's best for you, but I can see that I've hurt you too much for us to repair this relationship. I wanted to. I wanted everything to work out. But you need someone who won't remind you of this, and I can't let another child go from my life. He's not August, and he never will be. I wouldn't want him to be. But I have to give him the best life I can. I'm sorry, but I love her as well. I love both you and her, and I can't live like this anymore. I'm going down a little bit. Um, he says something else later on about, about it. He says, I thought I could let go of the child if I was with you and could keep my mind from it, but I can't. And joint custody from another state isn't good enough for me. He said, as much as I try, you'll never be able to be with me without being reminded of her and the baby will only make it worse. So I'm letting go. He says a lot of other stuff and he said, I'm so sorry. I've always known she was pregnant since November. And I've been trying to play both sides for so long. I wanted both futures. I don't know what to say other than ever since I found out she was pregnant, I felt drawn to the child. I've been afraid I would not be able to resist going to him. And in the end, it turned out that I can't forsake him. 
I'm so sorry. I have to tell you. I love you. I'm letting go. Sorry. So, as you can see, he's never going to try to come back. And I kept seeing um, comments of people saying he's definitely going to try to come back and we're going to go through another cycle and all that, but no, he's made his decision. Which, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't be with him now. How could I? How could I? Even me, even somebody as sick and and with no self-worth as me, I couldn't even... Because that should have been my baby. Because my baby is dead. And he took that and he gave it to her. <laughs> so that's why... That's why I've been so off the fucking rails because I've been dealing with this and I haven't told anyone <laughs> except for B. B's the only one who knows. And it's been so, <laughs> so hard. Because I feel like he robbed me of my future. I don't get to have a family, but he just gets to go. He gets to go have the family that should have been ours that we tried so hard for. He took everything from me. And it's just been really, really hard for me to cope with this. <sighs> and what's really messed up is, like, I, st I still love him. I still love him, even though he did this to me. <sighs> oh, God. I did talk about it with my therapist today. I had my therapy today. Um, I just, you know, and I, and I feel, it makes me feel like a piece of garbage because I feel like, I feel like because my body couldn't make a baby, he just threw me away and found somebody who could. And his family's all excited for the baby and just welcoming her in and they've known, they've known this too, for, they've known this for four months. And they all just discarded me because I couldn't give them a baby. That's what it feels like. My therapist said that's not it. It's not because I couldn't make a baby, but that's how it feels to me. That's how it feels to me. Like, I'm just, I have no value as a woman. I have no value as a person. Um, I'm just fucking trash now to them. They just cast me out and traded me in for a younger model, you know? And now... <laughs> now I have... I have nothing and no one. And he's just gonna go over there and live his happy little life with his fucking white picket fence and his son. <sighs> oh god. Thank you, Taylor, for the super chat. I appreciate that. And now um, that I've admitted this, um, there's no going back from it. I mean, there wasn't before, but it's just like I don't want. I don't want it to be real, you know. I just thought I could just if I didn't talk about it, it didn't have to be real. But it is real. And now I have to live in a world where the man I love <laughs> is having the child that I desperately wanted with another woman. <laughs> and it's just... It's, it's fucking torn me apart. It's made me lose my fucking mind <laughs> with grief. And I... I just don't know how I'm going to survive this. I don't know how I'm going to cope with it. <laughs> I 
I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I know my therapist told me, like, I can heal from this. It's going to get easier. I just have to get through one moment at a time. But sometimes I feel like I can't even get through the next minute because it just hurts so much. It's so it's the worst betrayal that I any, that he could ever do. It's the worst thing anybody could ever do to me. He knew how much I wanted a baby and how hard we tried. and. It's just... <laughs> I just can't believe he could do that. He told me that he didn't want it to happen. He didn't mean for it to happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I know that. Stupid son of a bitch. Oh God. I I I know this is gonna sound terrible, but I hope he's miserable. I don't think he's cut out to be a parent and I hope he's miserable. <laughs> and I've just been like it's all I can think about. It's why I can't eat, why I can't sleep, why I drink. Oh, God. <laughs> I know that he'll never be truly happy. I know. <laughs> I'm... I don't know how he knows it's his kid, but I assume that she wasn't sleeping with anybody else. I don't know. <laughs> she thinks she's his wife and she loves him, so I assume she was faithful to him, even though he cheated on her with me and maybe other people who fucking knows. They're both a fucking mess. I don't know how they can even remotely raise a child, so. I mean, I'm not much better, so how can I judge? But I'm not the one having a child right now, so. And my therapist told me today that it's possible that he will still try to come back after the excitement of the baby wears off and he has a screaming baby keeping him up all night and he's not getting sex anymore um that he's gonna want some peace and he may try to come back to me um i will never i won't i will not let him i can't like i could have forgiven anything but this anything but this i would have forgiven anything but this <laughs> I personally don't think he will try, but she said it's a possibility and that I should, you know, prepare myself for that. that... Um, <laughs> I don't know why I laughed. Sometimes I just do that when I'm nervous. <sighs> Thank you so much, HP. Hang in there, Cindy. That's awful news. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I just, I just can't. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what to say anymore. I knew, she, I've known she was pregnant since Sunday. Sunday is when he told me. Like three days ago. Yeah, they're both they're both horrible people and I believe that. 
And maybe I'm a horrible person too, but that doesn't make them any less horrible, does it? <laughs> oh man. It's just, I kicked him out on Saturday, but he didn't tell me this until Sunday. I'm pretty sure it was Sunday. Let me double check my, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, he left me in January for her. The first time he left me, it was for her. <laughs> Every time he left me, it was for her. Even though, and he never told, like, I didn't even know they were a thing until, like, two weeks ago. I didn't even know he had a, he had this relationship until I went to Arkansas this last time, a couple weeks ago. Then he stayed here with me for two weeks. Didn't tell me. We talked about how we could fix our marriage. We talked about how we could possibly stay together after his cheating. We made plans. And, but then when I found out he told her he loved her, I kicked him out. Even though I kicked him out, I still like secretly wanted him to come back, but he didn't. And he went to Colorado and then he, he went in two days. And the second day on Sunday, he sent me that message and told me that. Yeah, he did admit it. Yeah. He admitted he was playing both of us. I think that that message that I just read you is the most truthful he's ever been to me. I think that is the most truth he's ever told me. He probably was cheating with other women too. That would not surprise me at all. Nothing could surprise me at this point. Nothing could surprise me. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa. He was going to move his state away from his child. Think about that. He's not a man. I know. But in the end, he decided he had to go take care of it. So, good for him. He said he wanted to try and be with me, but he couldn't couldn't do it because, you know, and ha and even if by some miracle I could have forgiven that, which I can't, I couldn't because how could I be responsible for that kid not having a father? You know, how could I be like, come be with me anyway, and then that kid's not going to have a father? Like, it's not the kid's fault, you know? It's not the kid's fault it's going to be born into that shit storm. <laughs> he is a coward. Yeah, he is a coward. He couldn't even tell me that to my face. He couldn't even tell me to my face. <laughs> I didn't see her. I didn't see her in Colorado last time I went. I've seen her before, but I didn't. Well, I saw her in the. I saw her in a car. This last time that I went, I saw her in a car. But I've seen her before because he worked with her. But I didn't know they were, you know. Um, but yeah, this last time I went to Colorado, I saw her in a car, sitting in a car. So I didn't see, I couldn't tell. And in the pictures that I saw her on Instagram, she didn't even look pregnant to me. I thought she was just fat. Yeah. So I guess I did see her eight months pregnant, yeah, in the Instagram pictures, but she didn't, I didn't, I couldn't tell, I thought she was just fat. Yeah, she's due in three weeks. He told me she was due at the end of June, so, yeah. She doesn't have an Instagram, I don't think. I couldn't find one, and I looked. The pictures were on Andrew's sister's Instagram. And they've since, they have since been deleted. They've been deleted. Because I freaked out, and I guess they deleted them. I, I'm not going to tell you her name or show you her picture or anything. I'm not going to do that to her or to them. Though I, I hate them, I won't do that.
Well, I asked him, do you like fat women? And he said, yeah, a little bit. So, make what you will of that. I asked him that the other day. And that's when I asked him, are you still attracted to me? Since I lost weight, and he said yes. But he, I mean, of course he's going to say, he's not going to say, no, I'm not attracted to you. I mean, he sure didn't have any problem boning me, so... But, you know, he did, when he started being with her, I was still pretty overweight. So, I don't think he did it because I lost weight. But I do feel like he is more attracted to bigger girls. That's what I, that's what I think. Um, thank you so much, Bothania. I hope I'm saying your name right for the super chat. Um, I follow you from Morocco. We support you. Keep up. Thank you. I mean, now I feel like, I feel like I finally accepted it, that it's really over. I mean, there's no, there's no coming back from this, and he wants to be with the child, so, I mean, it's really, it's really done, so. All I can do now is start trying to move on, start trying to heal, and I told my therapist earlier, I don't know how I can ever heal from this. I feel like this is just like a gaping wound in my heart that's never going to close. It's the worst possible thing anybody could ever do to me. We talked at length, like, for years um, about how we wanted a family. We have had plans for our family. We talked about how we would raise our children and... the things that we would do together and now he's gonna go have that future with her <laughs> no I don't have any children my baby died my mine and Andrew's baby <laughs> they'll be miserable I can guarantee that I kind of hope they are and I know that's petty but I'm bitter I'm bitter and I'm hurt and I'm just I'm just utterly and completely destroyed I mean I don't think I don't think anything could hurt me more than this. Oh, she knew. She's known about me the whole time. She knew he was married to me. She knew he lived with me. She knew every time he came to see me, every time he fucked me, she knew. Yeah. No, I didn't use protect. We never used protection, me and Andrew. But I got tested for STDs. I don't know. I am. I'm a hundred percent no contact with him. I mean, I don't have any way to contact him except for his email, but I don't think he checks his email because he's, like, afraid I'm going to email him. And he's very avoidant, so I doubt he would check it even if I did, but um, I don't have any kind of phone number or anything for him. I have her phone number, obviously, that I got off the phone records, but... Um, I'm not going to call her because what the fuck's the point in that? I mean, I already did it once. And it got me nowhere. I don't even know what I was trying to do. I was just like desperate and in a frenzy. It was after I got that, that message that I called her. I don't know if she cheats on him or not. I know, I know very little about her. I know nothing about like what kind of person she is or anything. I don't know her. 
I've seen her twice. Once in a car and once um, when he worked with her. B told me he's a piece of shit and I don't need that in my life. He's going to do the same thing to her. Oh yeah, and it's going to be worse for her. Karma's coming for them. It's going to be worse for her because she's going to have a kid. At least I don't have a kid in the middle of this. But he will do this to her. In a little while when he gets bored and when, when the newness of the relationship wears off, and he starts looking for his next conquest. Yeah, he's going to do it to her. I 100% guarantee it. Because he's not getting help. Um, like I said, we got him in therapy here. And he went to one, he went one time. And now what? He's not getting help. So he's just going to keep doing the same shit. B just texted me and said he stands by that statement. <laughs> Thank you, B, for making me laugh. In the middle of my tragedy. You always make me laugh. Uh, thank you so much, Sam. Hi, lovely Cindy. We care for you so much. You're so strong. One moment at a time. The amazing life you deserve is coming your way. I promise you deserve better. I do deserve better. I know that, but, like, I can't help it. I still love him. Which, I feel like I should hate him. But I don't. I love him still. I'm still in love with him, even though he did this to me. What kind of sick shit is that? You can't just turn it off, you know? He is a pathological liar, yes. He lied to me so much. Like, you don't even know the extent of his lies, and he is good at it. He, he's got a silver tongue. He played both of us, and he, oh, his lies are so, he can do the most elaborate lies. I don't know how he keeps up with it. I really don't. It's it's impressive. I told him that too. I was like, the, the extent of your lies, it's really impressive. I don't know how anybody could do it. Yeah. He did. He wasted all of my childbearing years. Well, it was that's not that's not only his fault, that's me too. Like I gave those years to him. I chose to do that. And, like, part of me, like, I still love him. I still, I still feel some empathy for him. I still don't think he's evil. I think he's very sick and very confused, and I think he needs help. <sighs> Thank you so much, Lula Lulu. You think she's got a husband. Guess what? The mistress spot is free now. That's exactly right. Be happy, be free, Cindy. Love from Argentina. That's right. He's got a new opening in his life. He'll go find himself another another girl now. And I I, I hope he doesn't think it's going to be me. I won't be a mistress. Players only love you when they're playing. Women. They will come and they will go. That was way out of tune. <laughs> I know he already cheated on her with me and she knows that. I told her that and she already knew. She was basically like, I said he's been fucking me the whole time and she said, well, I didn't think you guys were reading books. I thought that was pretty clever. I told her that too. I was like, that's clever. Um, but I hate her guts because she knew about me and she chose to sleep with my husband. Thank you, Dolly. Um, please get a divorce. Any debt he incurs could fall on you. Don't give him the opportunity. Sending so much love. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I do need to file for divorce. I got to figure out how to do that. I mean, I'm really angry at Andrew. I'm way more angry at him than her, obviously. Obviously, it's way more on him than it is on her. But, I mean, I'm still angry at her, too. Because she knew and she chose to sleep, keep sleeping with a married man. This is this guy that I've been talking to.
I gotta text him back in a minute. He's really nice. I think he's too nice for me. Which is really, I'm, I got something wrong with me. I'm like, you're too nice. I can't. I need you to be a dick to me or something. I don't know. I'm sick. Um, thank you, Sarah Bear. Don't care. The darkest hour is before the dawn. You will get what you've always wanted. We are here to support you. You will get through this. Lots of love. Thank you so much. It just really sucks because I feel like if I'm going to have a child, I, I've got to work on my mental health. Obviously, I'm not anywhere near ready to produce a, another human being and care for it. Um, and I just feel like I don't have time to get my shit together, meet somebody, get pregnant. Like, it's just, I think that's part of why I desperately wanted Andrew back. Because I just wanted to pick up where we left off. I just wanted to have my baby, my family with him that we always planned. I thought we could still do it. We could just work through this in marriage counseling. We could figure it out. But now there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. I know, but he's nice in like a too nice way. Like, I don't mean... He's too polished for me. I need somebody who's rough around the edges. I need somebody who's a little bit crude. And he's just, like, too sweet. I don't know. I'm not giving up on him because he did make a funny joke about the dogs earlier. He did. He made a funny shit joke, so... Maybe he's just on his best behavior right now. I know, he might be a little more crude once I get to know him, I know. I'm giving him a chance because I really like him. He's He's really nice, but... You know, like I said, I'm not, obviously, I am not anywhere close to ready for any kind of serious relationship, and I told him that. We're just kind of chatting and stuff, and it makes me feel better to have somebody interested in me. <laughs> B said, but did he say dookie? He did not say dookie. <laughs> he did not. Hold on, I gotta text him back real quick. I gotta put a smiley face on there. There we go. Okay. Uh, my phone case is so ra raggedy. It used to have purple flowers all over it, but they all peeled off, and there's just like a little remnant left and like some dirt. <laughs> it's so awful looking. I need to get a new phone case. I know I'm very vulnerable right now. And I'm talking to like, let me see, one two, three, three different guys. I couldn't even remember how many. I'm talking to three different guys right now. And you know what's crazy? One of them, this is so freaking insane. One of these guys, um, he was, he messaged me on, on a dating site and he was like, do I know you? He was like, I swear I know you. Did you used to have a MySpace back in the day? And I was like, holy shit. This guy, I used to talk to this guy on MySpace like 15 years ago, like before, right before Andrew and I got together. I used to talk to this guy on MySpace and he lives in a little town that's right near like where a lot of my family lives. So we just, we used to talk, we used to chat on MySpace and stuff. And he was like, I swear I know you. And he... And I was like, and I looked at his, la he told me his last name and I looked at the town he was from. I was like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it's me. It's me. We used to talk on MySpace all the time, like 15 years ago. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? But he's like, I don't think he's my type at all, but I just thought that was so crazy. But I've been talking to him all day. He's really nice. Um, I used to really, I used to love talking to him. He's really nice. He remembered me. He remembered me from 15 years ago. And I didn't remember him on site at all. 
it wasn't until he talked about MySpace and, and told me his last name and where he was from. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember you. I definitely remember you. Yeah, he's a friend. I mean, all three of these dudes are just friends right now. The other guy has not messaged me back, though. I wonder if I said something. The other, the guy who has not messaged me back is the one I'm most interested in because he plays guitar and he's into witchcraft and he is really cute. He's like the, he's like my number one choice out of the guys I'm talking to, but he hasn't messaged me back in a while, so I don't know. I don't know, maybe I said something stupid. Yeah, he's into witchcraft, and he plays guitar, and he's got, like, tattoos and piercings and stuff, and he's really good looking. He also asked for my YouTube channel, and I was like, um, let me get to know you a little bit more. I don't want you to know how fucking crazy I am yet. <laughs> I don't tell any of them my YouTube channel, y'all. I know I better not date another musician. I cannot help myself. I I can't. You just you pull out a, a you pull out a guitar and I'm just like my panties drop. <laughs> B is just my friend and he's married. <laughs> the chat went crazy. B is married. His wife is on one of my vlogs. Maybe go for a drummer. I could go for a drummer. I pl I dated a bass player one time. Um, one of my first boyfriends. My first boyfriend that I ever lived with played bass. I can definitely get down with a bass player. I know. I'm free now. I'm finally fucking free. And I'm trying to, like, accept that. You know, I'm trying to accept that I will never have Andrew back. But it's just so hard to accept it. Because he's been part of my life. He's been like my whole world for so long. And for him to just abandon me for a new family is the fucking worst thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> B! I'm not going to read that one. That one is too crude for YouTube. <laughs> oh, God. And, act and actually, I got to text you back a response to that. Hold on. Sometimes I can't share what he says. Um, the worst is, I mean, I know it can't get any worse. It's the absolute worst is the worst is over. You're absolutely right. Like, it, I mean, all, it can only go up from here, right? It can only go up from here. Man, 1800 viewers. I must have the whole snark subreddit on here. Well, Andrew played games. He was, like, addicted to games, so he was, like, addicted to gaming for a while. So. It could be worse if I was pregnant as well, yeah, but I took a pregnancy test today and it was negative. So, I, I'm not. I don't think so, unless I ovulated late or something, but. Um. Uh, I, according to my app, what's today? According to my app, I'm 11 days past ovulation, so I probably would have got a, a positive if it was if I was. But yeah, I was like, I gotta make sure because yeah, that would be the worst. That would be the worst possible thing that could happen. Yeah, I can find, so I feel like now, um, since there's no chance of him coming back in and out in my life, in and out of my life again, 
that I can finally start to try and get better and deal with this and move on. I feel like the past four months have just been a nightmare, a shitstorm. I've been out of my mind. I have been off the fucking rails crazy. I have done so many stupid, horrendous things over the past four months out of my grief and pain from losing him and like desperately trying to hold on to him and cling to him and desperately trying to make him love me and be with me and like try to go back to our old life and it's just now it's over i mean now it's completely over and i know that and um i just want to try to really truly get better and be better he gave me false hope so many times he did so much future faking with me he would tell me you know we would make plans for our future and stuff and it was all lies it was all bullshit I mean, you would not believe the way this man can lie. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's incredible the lies he can he can he can come up with and keep up with. I did. I've unfollowed his family and stuff. Yeah, I have. He's future faking with the other woman. Yeah, I believe he is because I don't think. He is in any position to have any kind of future with anyone. He even told me himself, I'm not cut out to be anybody's partner right now. And he's not. No, his family was always wonderful to me and I loved them. I got the feeling that after I made my first video about him leaving me, that that's kind of like when they turned against me. I don't know for sure. And his mom was still like, when I went to Arkansas, I called his mom like several times and she talked to me and she helped me like get in contact with him. So I didn't think that she hated me. And then Andrew told me that she loved me and everything, but now she won't talk to me. So I guess she thinks I'm going to be crazy and shit, which I don't blame her. You know, I, I probably, if she would answer the phone for me, I probably would have been crazy as hell, so you probably did the right thing blocking me. And I don't even know what I would have said. What would I even say? Your son's a piece of shit. You know, she probably didn't want to hear that. My hair looks better and better, thank you. It's still like, I mean, I still got issues. Obviously, it's still really thin. I'm still really self-conscious about it. Do you think he asked her to block you? Yeah. I think he might have even been with her when I was calling. And, he was, and I think he was probably like, just block her. Or she was probably like, Cindy's calling. What do you want me to do? You know, I think that could have been a possibility. And of course she's going to take the side of her son. And I don't blame her for that. You know, anybody would. Yeah. I know I wanted her to hear my version, but it doesn't matter. None of it matters now. They're all happy over there. They're all going to have a baby in the family again. Everybody's great and happy and wonderful. And nobody gives a fuck about me. They just fucking kicked me to the, to the curb. And I, and it makes me feel like a piece of shit. Yeah, like, I'm so sorry that my body was too shitty to make a baby for your family. I meant, in, I meant them. I didn't mean my, I know my YouTube people give a shit about me. I know you guys do. I was talking about, like, the family over there. Yeah. I know I don't need to be resentful, but I am right now. I'm angry, I'm resentful, I'm hurt, and I'm just like, right now, I'm just coming from a place of pain and anger. Yeah. Oh, he has been lying to me since the start of our relationship. Yeah, he has. 
I I mean, there were things that I things that he did and stuff from the very beginning. Nothing like this, but there were things. There were red flags that I ignored because I loved him. He's he he is and was like my best friend. It's really hard to lose him. I even thought about could could I still be friends with him? Like could we still talk about music and podcasts and stuff cuz I just missed that so much and I was like no, there's no way. There's no way because he just hurt me too badly. Hold on. He may end up contacting you years later about how he did her dirty. Um, he's gonna do her dirty. He's going to. Andrew Lothario, yeah. People always talk about Andrew's hair, but when I when we got together, he had all of his hair. Like when we got together, he was. He was really hot. I mean, I still find him very attractive because he's he was my man for 15 years. But, um, like, when we got together, when we got together, he was 20 years old. He was 20 when we got together, and I was 24. We were young. We were young and dumb. And I also feel like he didn't have a lot of experience. Um... You know, he'd only had a couple girlfriends before me, and I feel like he kind of went through a midlife crisis, you know, where he felt like I took 15 years from him, and he didn't get to, like, date around and stuff because we got together when he was so young, and I almost feel like he, he feels like I, I robbed him of something. But, you know, he fucking was super in love with me, and he was the one who pursued me. He he pursued me hard. He tried hard to get with me. I and I thought he was out of my league when I met him. Yeah. I mean, I think the reason why he left her for me, th he's left her three times now for me. I think three times. Maybe twice. I don't know. I don't fuck. I can't keep up with it anymore how much he's fucking come and gone. But I think it's because he does still love me. It's it's hard to break a bond. You know, we have such a strong bond and we've been together for so long. I think he does still love me in a way. In a way. I don't think he's in love with me. If you're in love with somebody, you couldn't do this. Couldn't do this. I told him that. I was like, he told me he was in love with me. And I was like, no, you're fucking not. Because I'm in love with you, and I could never do this to you. You may love me, you may care about me in a way, but you're not in love with me. Yeah. I think he loves me in his own sick fucking way, but he's definitely not in love with me. I think he's in love with her. Or, you know what? No, I don't. I don't think he's in love with her either. If he was in love with her, he w he could never have left her for me either. I don't think he's in love with either of us. I don't think he even knows what that even is. I know he's not going to stand by her. I know. He kept telling me that every time he slept with her, he would be like, okay, I'm going to dump her after this. It's the, it's the last time. He told me the first time, he was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. And then he would do it again, and he'd be like, okay, that's the last time. And then he just kept doing it and kept doing it, and eventually, I guess, he fell in love with her. Or he thought he did, whatever. I don't know. I think he would have just kept doing it indefinitely behind my back if she didn't get pregnant. I think, the, I think the reason why he left me is because she got pregnant. And if she didn't get pregnant at that time, he would have just kept doing it. He worked with her. That's how he met her. He worked with her at Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut.
I asked him what he liked about her. He said she's nice to me. And I guess that was his way of telling me that I'm a fucking psychopathic bitch. I don't think he thinks a baby will fix his issues. I think he feels some kind. So he doesn't have a great relationship with his father. So I feel like he wants to do the right thing for the baby. Which I understand. You know. He doesn't want the kid to have a shitty father. It just sucks that it's fucking to my detriment, you know. The only reason he's with her is because he's trying not to pay child support. I don't think so. Because he's not the kind of person that would even think or care about that. He drove back to Colorado. Yeah. I mean, he thinks the baby is his. I don't think she would cheat on him. She, When I talked to her on the phone, she sounded pretty defensive and like, he's my man kind of shit, you know? So... Thank you so much, Lacey Vlogs. Oh, my heart just deeply hurts for you, girl. Don't ever blame yourself. This is your chance to shine and become a new you while he continues unhealed. Sending love. Thank you. I mean, that's what I'm going to try to do. It's the only thing I can do. The only thing I can do. My therapist said we're going to start working on self-worth and self-love in the future. I told her I don't think I'm capable of that. That I really fucking feel like a piece of shit, like a piece of garbage. I don't even feel like a person. No, Trish was an old lady. Not Trish. Trish is like 60 years old. Do I think he has another person lined up after this woman? Um, I don't think he does yet, but I think he will. I think he's still, they're still like in that first, you know, that early stage of the relationship. But once that wears off, I think he will. I know he will if he doesn't get any help. I think he's, I don't think he's prepared for what it's going to be like to have a baby. And um, especially not with somebody like her who's a fucking mess. So. At least from what he's told me, I really, I don't know her personally. Like I said, I've only seen her twice. Um, but he told me that, I'm not going to tell you what he told me, but from what he told me, I think the two of them together is going to be a shit storm. He probably should find a better job. He probably should. I don't really give a fuck. They have no money. Mm -mm, they don't have any money. I got more money than both of them combined. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. I mean, he'll get a job. He probably already has one. He's really, he's, he's very good at like, he's very good at getting jobs. He's very good at job interviews. He's very good at getting it. He always gets a job. I bet you anything he already has one. He never goes without a job. He likes to he likes to make money. He likes to have money. Their families will help. Yeah, they definitely will. They definitely will. No, he doesn't have any money for, left from the sale of the house. All the money from the sale of the house went to pay off our combined debt. And it's, and it's still not even all paid off. I will be paying off the rest of it. It's, there's not much left. but No, he would never try to get alimony from me. He would not do that. Like, that's what I'm saying. He's not an evil person. He would never, like, come after me for money or steal my money or do any shit like that. He would never do that. 
He would never do anything to hurt me in that way. I would never get, try to get alimony from him. I wouldn't do that. I know I need to, I got to figure out how to get a divorce. I don't even know what to do. And part of me just wants to make him do it. But then it'll never get done. Take everything. There's nothing to take. The only thing he has is a car. We have, we have two cars. Actually, we have, together, we have one car. I, and I have my own car. And... That the orange car is, is both of our names are on it, and I still have the title to it. But I'm just, you know, I'm not that petty. Like, he needs to have a vehicle, especially for his job, so he can have that. I know he's a man child. He definitely is. Yeah. I'm attracted to, to, to a man child. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I, li I like it. There's something wrong with me. You have to wait one year and one day to apply for divorce in Australia? Damn. I need to look up. I know you don't have to. I don't think you have to do that in Arkansas because I got divorced in Arkansas from my first husband. And it was just like they had to track him down. They had to like find him because I had no idea where he was. Yeah, I want to care for someone. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I like to be cared for, but I also like... I like to be cared for in a certain way, but I like to care for a man. I like to care for a man financially and like also I like to like cook and clean and do shit like that. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm not, I, the thing is I'm not that motherly. Like when Andrew and I discussed when we were gonna have a kid, he is definitely the more nurturing one in the relationship. Like he's very nurturing. And that's something that I really loved. Um, and I'm not that much. But the way that I take care of, the way that I took care of him is, is that I always made sure our bills were paid. I always did our finances. I always um, did that kind of stuff. And that was how I kind of like contributed to the relationship. And he, he was more like the nurturing one. I do take good care of my dogs because I have to. He is, he is nurturing. Yeah, he really is. He always took care of me. Until he didn't. So do I want to have kids or did I just want to have his kids? I wanted to have his, I wanted to have his baby. I wanted to have a child with him. But now I don't anymore, I guess. And I, I still do want to have a child, but I don't think it's going to be possible for me. I think I'm going to have to accept that that's just not going to happen for me. And that's really hard to deal with, especially knowing that the man I wanted, I wanted to be the mother of his child, and now he has a child with somebody else. That's really fucking hard. I don't, I, I'm just, I don't want to do any of that shit. I don't want to do IVF. I don't want to, like Andrew and I discussed, like we were going to do IVF and I would have done it with him. I would have done it for him. But I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do it now, obviously. I don't have, I guess I'd have to get a sperm donor and be a single parent and I'm just not, I don't want to do that. And I honestly don't think I could adopt. Who the hell's going to give me a baby? You know, I'm kind of a fucking mess. Maybe when I get all my shit together. If ever. Yeah.
You need someone who gives as much to you as you give to them, says Bryn. Yeah, I agree with that. But honestly, for most of our marriage, I feel like Andrew gave me more than I gave him. And uh, I was not the greatest wife to him. And I guess that's why he went looking for somebody else. And he found what he was looking for. I'll call you later, B, when I get done. I mean, it's not my fault that he cheated on me, but I feel like it's partially my fault that he, that we had marital issues that made him feel like he needed to do whatever the fuck he did. Well, he, he kind of told me a little bit about, like, how she started, like, flirting with him at work and stuff, and, like, it made him feel good and all that kind of shit, and then one thing led to another, and they were banging in a car somewhere or something. I don't fucking know. I told him not to fucking tell me anymore. I know, he cheated on her with me, and I guess she's cool with that. But, like, not like I can say anything. I was going to take him back after he cheated on me with her, so I guess we're both fucking idiots. Yeah, I mean, it was both of us that contributed to it, but... I know. Oh, he did definitely told her he was going to leave me. Um, she was telling him that, that she was going to come to the house and tell me everything if he didn't, if he didn't leave me and go be with her. And I was like, don't you think that's pretty manipulative? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, but you told me you left me because I was manipulative. So what the fuck? What the fuck, man? And he was like, he just didn't want me to find out. He didn't want me to know. He didn't want to hurt me. He didn't want me to know what he had done. So he just left me and said, like, you crazy, bitch. I'm out of here. But really, that was the reason why he left. Uh, thank you so much, Kaleidoscopic Star. He was just stumbling around because he's lost on his own. It's not because you were defective or there's something wrong with you. Thank you. I know, like, it feels like. It feels like there is, you know. But I know he's lost and sick and hurt. I know that. That's why I still have empathy for him. Thank you, Shara G. Don't blame yourself. He's an adult and made an adult decision. He did it because he wanted to. Nothing to do with you. Please remember that. Yeah, I mean, it's true. He did want to. And, I, I like, I asked him. I was like, well, why did you keep doing it then? If you, if it was a mistake... And you felt so guilty about it. Why did you keep doing it hundreds of times for a year? I don't know if it was hundreds of times, but I don't know how many times it was, but it was probably, he told me it was like once a week or some shit. And I was like, why did you keep doing it? And he didn't really have an answer for that. And I was like, it was because you wanted to. It was because you wanted to do it. I know, that's what I said. I was like, I guess you didn't feel that guilty about it. And he said he just compartmentalized it. He just put it in the back of his mind. Yeah. Because he would tell me that he got called into work early or he had to do an extra shift or something like that, and he was really going to see her. He, that's what he told me. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's only sorry because he got caught. That's what I told him, too. I never suspected a thing, ever. Never. I never suspected it. Nope, he was good. He was smooth. Yeah. I found out about her being pregnant two days ago. Yes, I've been tested for, I've been tested. He's a, he's a fucking, he's a, he's the best liar I've ever seen. He's incredible. He can spin lies and keep up with them and come up with the most elaborate shit and make you believe all of it. He's so good. I, and I'm sure he did the same thing to her. I'm sure he's doing it to her right now. No, she's really pregnant. Yeah, she really is. I, that was my initial thought. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure she's not just making that shit up? No, she's due in three weeks. He said he's seen the ultrasound. They bought baby shit. Everything. He, he has left me alone. He hasn't contacted me at all. He, I don't think he will. I think he made his decision. And he trickled this fucking information out to me. It took four months for me to get the full truth of this. Four months. He told me so many fucking stupid ass lies. And then it makes me look bad because people think I'm lying. But I'm just telling you what he fucking told me. I'm not lying. I'm telling you the fucking lies he told me. That I believed because I'm a fucking idiot. Like the fucking Tinder dates and shit like that. He just made all that shit up. Why would you do that? I don't know. I just honestly don't fucking know. Yeah, because he's a coward. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do about the divorce, honestly. It's like hard for me to even think about that right now. We obviously are going to get divorced. There's no way we're staying married after this. Yeah. She was pregnant and he knew and he still went back to me. Yeah. He thought that there might be some way that he could be with me. But in the end decided he couldn't do it and he had to be there for the kid. Hope she's okay with being a single mom. He's going to leave her too at some point. A hundred percent. I guarantee it. I guarantee he's not going to be able to handle this. His family's great. They're so happy. They're getting a baby in the family. They just love it. They fucking don't give a fuck about me. Yeah. Yeah, he, he told me about it after he left. Yeah. He didn't face me. He's never faced me with anything. Yeah, he will leave her after cheating on her, I guarantee. She has no idea what she's fucking getting herself into. I know I need to file for a divorce. It's just really hard for me to do. I, I mean, I know I'm going to be the one who eventually has to do it because both of them, they're not, they're not going to do it. I don't feel bad for her. She, she knowingly slept with a married man. I don't feel bad for her at all. And now she's going to get everything she deserves. Because he's going to fuck her over. Yeah, it took, I wish he would have just told me all of this. 
If he were a real man, he would have just told me all of this in the beginning. But he just kept lying to me, going back and forth between us. And I honestly don't think he knew what the fuck to do or what he was going to do. And I think he was, like, holding on to me. He was, like, holding on to me. Not wanting to really let me go. Oh, they're both going to get karma, yeah. The other woman with Leslie Mann and Cameron Diaz. Okay, I will watch it. Uh, thank you so much, Billy Joe, for the super chat. I've had to accept childlessness, Cindy. I tried every avenue. I understand what you're feeling. My first hubby did the same to me. You'll come through it. Thank you. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that, too. Fucking sucks. Yeah, we got this apartment together with him knowing that she was pregnant, yeah. That whole time, all those vlogs, our Christmas vlog, everything, all those vlogs in November, all Vlogmas, that whole time, when we were doing coffee of the day and our advent calendar, he knew that whole time. He knew that whole fucking time. Yeah. She's due in three weeks. I know, if he would have just told me the first time, I could have had like four months of healing behind me. But he just strung me along for all this time. Yeah. Yeah, he told me. He told me he knew. He told me he knew since November. And he also told me that his family was pressuring him to go back and be with her. I don't know if it's true, but it probably is. Yeah, it's just because of the baby. Yeah, because of the baby. If she wasn't pregnant, I don't think they'd be pressuring, pressuring him. But they just want that baby. That's all they fucking care about. And I couldn't give it to them, so they fucking went to somebody who could. Yeah, his family liked me. I loved them like my own family up until this happened and god knows what he told him about me he might have lied about that he might have lied about the family pressuring he might have he might have i don't know i don't know what of anything he told me that was true except for what he sent me in that message i believe was true i believe that's the only true thing he ever told me i know i'm sure he told him a lot of lies about me i'm sure he did so he could look better, to make him look better in their eyes, you know. I know, you're right. I mean, they didn't do this, and they're probably just trying their best in this situation. I know you're right. But it makes me feel really bad. It makes me feel really rejected. Because they were my family for so long. And they just, I just feel like they just threw me away. They didn't care at all. Yeah, he'd say anything to make his life easier, exactly. He doesn't want confrontation. He doesn't want to deal with anything. He just wants everything to go as smoothly as possible for himself. And he will say anything to make that happen. He's very, very avoidant. Oh, he's good. He's good. He's a good liar. He's a good actor. He had me fooled for 15 years. Yeah. No, I can't get my cat back from them. It's not like I can show up at their house and I can't have another pet here anyway. I 
I found out on Sunday, like two days ago. Yeah. You do see with blinders on when you're in love, it's true. No, they have a house together that they live in. I He regrets, I think he regrets it all now. I think he regrets everything now, and he's going to regret it even more in a couple of weeks. No, I don't think they'll last either. Yeah. I think he really I think he really was torn between us. I think he really did love me in in a way, in a way, but not enough, obviously. I've seen her twice. And I talked to her on the phone one time. You don't see how he's charming. He barely talked. He was uncomfortable on camera. But in real life, he's very charming. He's very witty. He's smart. He's funny. He's he's very charismatic. He has a lot of charisma. Everybody likes him. When, anybody who meets him likes him. He knows how to he knows how to smooth talk people. He's very good at it. Yeah, we're still legally married. He probably is scared because of the economic situation he's about to face. And that's what I think, too. That's what my therapist told me, too, Asia. He's probably going to come running back to me when the baby's born and things get hard. Yep. But he's not getting, he's not getting in here. He's not getting back into this. I think that he would be a good father because, like I said, he's very nurturing. But I also, at the same time, don't know if he's up for the challenge of this. Because he's also very avoidant. He runs away from things. I, won't, I can't take him back. How could I? How could I? Even me. Even me. I can't. I mean, this is too much even for me. I saw her in a car noodle. I saw her sitting in a car, so I couldn't tell she was pregnant. I saw pictures of her on Instagram. I didn't know she was pregnant. I thought she was fat. I mean, she is a little bit, so it's kind of like hard to tell. I know whenever I was pregnant because I was over I was pretty overweight when I was pregnant it took a long time for me to show but I didn't make it to eight months so I don't know but I didn't know I couldn't tell you hope the baby comes out very obviously not his I would love that I would love that Yeah. Your brother's girlfriend didn't know she was pregnant until she went into labor? Wow. I mean, I don't know how he can tell for sure it's his. I feel like she's probably not just sleeping with everybody in town because she was very like when I talked to her she was very like I'm his wife and I'm like no bitch I am but um I'm not I'm not anymore I mean I guess she's right
but I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything about her or any of that. No, I wasn't on keto or carnivore when pregnant. I was eating like fucking fast food all the time because it was the only thing I could stomach. I had very bad morning sickness. I don't know why she said that. I think she was just, I think she just like, it was like a knee jerk reaction to me saying, cause she was like, who is this? And I was like, this is Andrew's wife. And she was like, no, I'm his wife. I think it was just like, she was pissed off that he's married to me. Cause Andrew even told me that she's incredibly jealous of me. I know. No, I don't think he, I don't think he married her, no. She's 28. 20 fucking 8. Still got plenty of time to be a fucking brood mare for him. I mean, I think that she's not okay with him coming back to me and sleeping with me and stuff. But what's she gonna do? She's probably desperate because she's about to have a baby and she has no help. So she probably just took him back out of desperation. That's what I think. I started the carnivore diet after I lost the baby, yeah. Because I felt like my weight and my health were uh, may have contributed to that. I don't know for sure, but... Andrew's 35. Yeah, she'll put up with his crap for the baby. She thinks they're going to play house. Yep. Yep. She'll see. She'll see soon enough. I don't know. Maybe it'll take her 15 years like it took me. I'm sure he did tell I'm. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind he lied to her about things. He had to have. Because he was talking to me this the whole time. And I guarantee she didn't know. Yeah, I gotta get him off the car insurance. I haven't done it yet. I haven't. That hasn't been a priority. I look younger than him. Yeah, I kind of do. I kind of do. <laughs> He just lives on a fucking diet of fast food now. I mean, so do I, but, you know, I don't need the carbs, so I do better. <laughs> tomorrow I'm leaving. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to Colorado. Not for him, but to get my tags done and to go to the um, King Gizzard concert. I'm going to drive, I'm going to drive over two days because I don't want to, it's like 15 and a half hours to get to Red Rock, so I don't want to do it in one day, so I'm going to go over two days. Yeah, alone. And then, um, and I, because I have to stop and get my car registered and stuff, too. I'm meeting a friend there to, at the concert. Thank you for saying I look gorgeous. I have no makeup on because I freaking, I was going to, I knew today was going to be a rough day because I went to therapy and I cried a lot and I was like, I'm going to cry a lot in my stream. So there's no makeup today. Well, except for my lip, except for my lip balm, my lips, my lip shit. I can't sell the tickets. They're non-transferable because they're in the first six rows. They're good seats. And I can't transfer them, so I either have to use them or I have to lose the money. I found about out about her when I went to Arkansas. Like the like the live stream where I opened up the crown. After, right after that live stream is when I found out about her, and that's when I went to Arkansas that night. I mean, not Arkansas, Colorado. Damn it. I get so confused because I'm back and forth between these two states. Damn it. 
I never know where I am. Sometimes I'm like, what fucking time zone am I in? He might have been talking to women on Tinder. I don't know. I don't think he, I don't think he slept with any of them though. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. I think going to the concert is going to be a very healing experience for me. I think it's going to be a good experience for me. And it's something I really want to do. I want to do it without him. I can't believe he kept it for so long either. I really can't. I am going to reclaim my music. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Christine. I don't think he's going to go to the concert. He told me he wasn't going to go. I don't think he will. I don't think she'll allow him to. I mean, if he's there, I would probably would not be able to resist talking to him. But I don't think he's going to go. Yeah, I don't think he I don't think he will because I mean, I don't think he knows that I'm going to go. But I don't even think he would risk it. Cuz he told me in my in that message that that I should go and he's not going to go. So I don't know what I would say to him. I'd say you son of a bitch. That's probably what I'd say. I say you fucking son of a bitch, and then I would have to like restrain myself from just fucking punching him. I wouldn't do that, but I would want to. Yeah, I'm gonna vlog the trip to the concert. So I know I haven't put out any vlogs, and it's because I just have been too upset. Um, obviously, I just found out about this like two days ago, so I've been very upset, and I have not been able to film or edit vlogs that's why i've been doing live streams it's just been too difficult for me but i am gonna vlog starting in the morning i'm gonna vlog the trip now there may not be any videos for like four days because i'm gonna be gone for four days and i don't you know i'm gonna be on the road and stuff so i don't think i'll be able to like publish anything um somebody suggested that i do some instagram stories so i may do some instagram stories if you're not following me on instagram it's uh, life plus cindy on instagram so I may do some Instagram stories along the way just so you guys know what's going on. Holy shit, Deb. Oh my God. Thank you so much for that super chat. Jesus Christ. That is so generous. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Cindy. A huge reality check is going to hit him smack in the face very soon. Andrew has completely lost his mind. Yeah, he has. Run away as fast as you can. Dump his drama in the baggage that will soon follow. Hang in there, sweetie. Thank you so much, Deb. I truly appreciate that. I mean, he's lost his mind, and I've also lost my mind, so we're just two fucking crazy-ass lunatics on the streets. I don't know what to say. Like, we're both just fucked. Man, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, Deb, you are awesome. Thank you so much. I mean, that is so incredibly kind of you. I gotta go, I'm, my throat's getting dry. I'm gonna go make me another Coke Zero. I'll be right back, okay? Y'all watch for sh shadow people. We're still doing that. We're still doing that bit. Watch for the shadow folk. I'll be right back.
Did you see any? Any shadow people show up? I'm reusing my McDonald's cup because I got a Diet Coke today. And it just, it's perfect with ice and like one little can of a Coke Zero can fit in here. Five at least. Well, maybe I'll have some company tonight. Maybe one of them can jump in my bed. I don't look that good without makeup. It's just this camera kind of sucks, so it doesn't, like, pick up many of my flaws. You can kind of see my freckles. I have freckles all across my face right here. But usually you can't see them because I'm wearing makeup. Oh, shit, I got a text. Oh, yeah, we got to smoke cigars. B? No, I, I don't think I have shadow people, but I always get my audience to uh, watch for them just in case. I'm trying to get haunted up in here. I really like my freckles and so I, I wish they would show through more maybe I should just like not put makeup right there <laughs> I don't know how I can blend that out and look decent I have a little bit of melasma right here like see this discoloration you can kind you can see it there's like discoloration on my forehead right here I got that in Colorado from walking in the sun without sunscreen because you're so close to the sun there because you're so high above sea level and when I was on birth control I went out in the sun and Andrew and I used to go walk around the park and I got this melasma and it never went away. <laughs> oh my God. Dot my freckles in with brown eyeliner on top of makeup. Hey, that's a good idea. I feel like it would look fake though. I don't know if I could pull it off. I am going to decorate this room. I mean, this room is a fucking disaster. There's just like a fucking bunch of trash back there. I don't need... That's that's like shit from my printer I bought. Like the stuff from, that came out of the box. There's like a bunch of cables. There's a record player and records over... There's just shit everywhere in here. There's a bunch of stuff from my subscribers over here that I haven't put away yet. Um, There's packages back there. Like, I got a lot of work to do on this room. And I'll probably do that in vlogs next week sometime. Because I really do want to work on this room. It's just, I haven't felt like doing anything. I, I'm i just, I'm really, really depressed right now. I'm really upset. I know I was happy to have my own space, and I am happy to have my own space. When Andrew was here, my God, he's a mess. I feel like all I was doing was like cleaning up after him. Jesus Christ, he's a mess. Um, and I like having my space and everything staying clean and stuff. Well, except for this room. This is my junk room where I just throw everything. The pups are good. Morty's down here in his dog bed and Bella's down here under the... She, she's so freaking cute. I wish you guys could see this. Hold on. If she doesn't move, I'm going to try to move the camera down here. Hold on, let me cover that up. Y'all, this is so cute. Hold on. Oh, you can't see her. You cannot see her. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my flashlight. Look at this. This is Bella. She's sleeping. <laughs> Look how she's sleeping. Oh, she, I woke her up. I woke her up with my... Sorry, Belle. Sorry, Belle. I didn't mean to disturb you. I just want to show people how cute you are. Hold on. Sorry. Oh my god, I can, now I can't get it back right. Did you see that though? Okay, that's not how it is. There we go. Now, damn it. Stay how I, stay right. That's not right. That's like all off center, hold on. Damn it! Alright, that's good enough. That's how she she got caught slipping. <laughs> she just like doesn't even usually she sleeps in the chair, but I guess she just wanted to sleep under there tonight. Um 
Morty. Oh man, you're gonna make me pick up the camera and do all that shit again? He is looking super cute though. Okay, hold on. I'll do it. I'll do it for him. Oh shit. Oh no, I, I disturbed him. He was sleeping in that bed right there. Say hi, my Mark. Say hi, buddy. Say hi, buddy. Oh, there's my baby boy. There's my sweet baby boy. There's my good boy. He was uh, sleeping in that bed, but I disturbed him. Damn it. Oh my god. It won't stay. It's like crooked. It's crooked. Damn it. I'm sorry, y'all. This is probably making me dizzy as hell. That's good enough. Make sure to keep my window shut so Bella doesn't get abducted by aliens. He never doesn't look cute. He's my little baby boy. My webcam is in, it's a Logitech, I don't know. It's the, whatever the newest Logitech is. <laughs> You're going on a trip in your favorite rocket ship. Oh man, C920, or it might be a C922, it might be a C922, or C920, I can't remember, I don't know which one it is, I don't know, can I look, hold on, it's a C920, it's a HD Pro Webcam C920, yeah, I don't think he was trying to set me up in Arkansas to make sure I didn't find out about the kid, I don't think that was his intention, I really think he did try to be with me in some kind of weird fucked up way and just he couldn't do it. That's what I think, but I don't know. We can't ask him. I was going to have him come on a video and like kind of talk about his bullshit, but he left before he could do that. I don't want to move anywhere in the next five years. I want to stay here. I love this place. Um, for the rest of the night after I finish streaming, I got to start getting ready for my trip tomorrow. So I've got to pack. Um, I got to get the dog stuff together because I'm taking the dogs to, they're going to be boarded while I'm gone. So I'm not going to take them with me. Um, so I gotta get them. I gotta get all their stuff together because I have to bring their food and their leashes and everything. And I have to get all my clothes together. I have to get all my everything that I'm not going to use in the morning. Um, and I think I'm. I gotta go vacuum out my car in the morning because it's like really bad before I go. And I got. I have to get the dogs to the boarding place at 8 a.m. and then I'm leaving. And I'm gonna drive nine and a half, like nine nine and a half hours tomorrow, the first day. And then I'm going to stop for the night and then I'm going to drive like um, six hours the next day. Oh yeah, I got to call B. Thank you, B. I got to call B after this too. And I got to text back this guy, this nice guy I've been talk talking to because I told him I was streaming. And I would text him after. And I think I'm going to take a bath and shave my freaking hairy ass legs. Um, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna wear. I think I'm gonna wear my favorite skinny jeans and like probably, I don't know, I might wear, might wear my Murlocs t-shirt to King Gizzard because Ambi is gonna be there. Like he's gonna see me or something. I'm like, look at me, I'm wearing your shirt. <laughs> I am gonna do, well, you know what, when I go to the boarding place, I'm gonna ask them if I can add on an extra day. I don't know if they'll have room. If they don't have room for the dogs to stay an extra day, I'm gonna have to do a, a 15 hour drive in one day. But I will be fully rested. I'll leave at like five in the morning. Um, but if they can take the dogs for an extra day, then I'll do two days back. 
and I'll probably stop somewhere in Oklahoma. You're putting it into the universe that I'll get seen in my shirt. I'm going to be in row four. Maybe he'll see me. That's my celebrity crush, but he's married though. And I don't know why I said that like I would have a chance or something. Like, if he wasn't married, he's definitely going to come for me. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. But, um, I, I've, I've made eye contact with him before at a Murloc show. Like, I was, I was in the very front row, right, literally, he was like right here in front of me. He sweated on Andrew. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm going on a road trip tomorrow to Colorado. Um, he doesn't have the commitment to get divorced. No, he's incredibly disorganized and scatterbrained and can't, like, do anything like that. Um, like, he's, he's supposed to be tested for ADHD. But, yeah, he left because he's just completely... I don't even think he would ever file for divorce. I don't think he could even put that together for himself. I'm worried about that he's even going to get car insurance. Which is why I still have car insurance on his car. I feel like he does not like appreciate the things that I've done for him and how I've taken care of him in that in those ways. In those ways. Like I always took care of that kind of thing. He t he took care to be fair, he took care of me way more in way more in way more ways, like emotionally and um so many more ways than I took care of him, to be fair. So I guess I can't say anything. I know it's not my problem, but I still care about him. I still care about him. And I know I shouldn't be paying his car insurance, but I am. Maybe I'll just do it for a month. Yeah, he has um, executive dysfunction, definitely. Definitely. Um, when I'm on the road, I just use my iPhone uh, 12 Pro to film. And I have a gimbal, too. I have a... Let me show you. Oh, sorry, Morty. This is what I use to hold my phone. So, let me show you how it works. This is a Oz, DJI Osmo, is what it's called. DJI Osmo. So, like, when it turns on, this stabilizes the phone. So when I'm filming, it stays smooth, and I can you can move it around and stuff, and it stabilizes the phone. So that's how I film a lot of times. Now sometimes, like when I'm in the concert, I can't carry this thing around. So like if I'm in somewhere, like at an event, I'll just hold the iPhone in my hand, and it's never that bad. This is mostly good if you're gonna be. Oh my God, it's freaking out! It's freaking out! Stop freaking out! Stop freaking out! I just snapped the phone out and it was like no no um and you can i sit this down as like a um it's like a mount for the phone too but if i'm going like in red rocks i'm just gonna hold the phone in my hand you i can't carry this around this i think this was like 150 dollars. it was expensive but i've had this since before the devil's canyon vlog so it's like it it's really Dirty. It lasts you a long time, and it's um, really helpful for recording with your phone because it sta it stabilizes, and then also you can use it as a tripod. So yeah, highly recommend that if you're going to film on your phone. And that's all I take with me when I'm on the road is my gimbal and my phone. And I will take. So this is what my web my uh this is what my the camera that I film like in my house and stuff is what it looks like and it's a Sony Z something I don't remember what it is Sony Z something uh, ZV1 a Sony ZV1 and this is the one that makes my skin look like it's flawless but it's really not okay and uh, so I like it because it has the the screen that pops out so you, when you have it like on yourself, you can see yourself. Make sure you're centered in the camera. And then it has a little mic guard thing. And it has a little tripod on it, which you can fold that up if you need to hold it. 
and my lens came off as you can see I, I broke I've dropped this thing so many damn times this thing is like indestructible but my lens the lens came completely off and it still works so that's the extent of my equipment and then a um, webcam and then I have some lights back here too That little pom-pom thing is a, it, it makes it so where if you're recording like in the wind, it's a wind guard. So if you're recording in the wind, it won't make like that sound. Oh, and also tonight, another one of my plans is I'm going to completely take everything off of my phone. I have so many videos and pictures of me and Andrew and all the concerts we went to and everything. And it's killing me. It's fucking killing me. So I'm going to dump all of that into a folder on my computer put it away and never look at it again probably for many years and just completely wipe my phone off um thank you so much johanna uh for the super chat i really appreciate that um i would have gladly given him the title to the car if he would have told me he was going to colorado but I have, I also have his birth certificate, his social security card, the title of the car. I have a bunch of his shit like that, and I probably need to figure out how to get that to him. If his mom would talk to me, I would send it to her. Um, I don't know. Or maybe he can just get new copies. I don't know. He, like I said, he can't, he can't handle shit like that, so... I thought about renting a car, but it was going to cost three hundred dollars. It was going to cost three hundred dollars to rent a car. So I'm just going to drive my illegal car to to Colorado and hope I don't get pulled over. And if I do get pulled over, hope that they don't give me a ticket because I have like the t registration card in there. And if I can just be like, I'm on my way to get the plates right now. Here's the title complete card. Here's the title registration card. Like, please don't give me a ticket. I think I'll be okay. Um, but I don't know. I might have to pay a fine or something if I get pulled over. But it'll still be probably cheaper than $300 to rent a rental car. Has his mom always enabled him? Yeah. I know, he needs to figure out how to get it from me. I know, but he won't. I need to, I, so I know, I care too much. I know. I still care about him. I still don't want him to fail. And I still want him to do well, despite all this. He does, I, he does not deserve the amount of love that I have for him. I truly believe that. But I can't turn it off. I do still have my Sims 2 poster, yes. It's in the closet over there. I'm going to hang it up in here, too. I'll probably hang it up on that wall right there in between the two closets. I know. I know it's his problem. I know it is. It's a 17 to $30 penalty if you're caught driving with an unregistered vehicle. That's all right. But I don't know what it is. I have to go through several states. Like, I, well, I'm going Arkansas, Oklahoma. I think I go through New Mexico. I'm not going through Texas. I hate taking that route. Horrible. It'll turn off naturally eventually. Yeah, it will. It will. I, it's going to take me a long time. It's going to take me a long time to stop loving him. I still love him right now. Have I checked my email yet? Um, not in a while. Not in a while. I think if I explained my situation, they would be like, just give me a warning or something. I hope. But if not, I'll just pay the fine. I gotta do what I gotta do. And like I've I like I've driven several times from Colorado to Arkansas and back and I've never been pulled over, but we'll see. My check engine light is still on, yeah. 
But you know what I think it is? I think it's because the car is missing a gas cap. The car doesn't have a gas cap at all. And I think that's causing the check engine light to come on. That's what I think it is. It never stops. It's like every time I thought it was the worst it could possibly get. Just more happened. Until now I'm just fucking at the absolute bottom. And I just, I'm in shock, really. Like, I can't even believe this is true. I can't even believe, like, the man I married would never do this to me. So I don't know what happened to him. I don't know what happened to him. I mean, maybe it was me. Maybe it was just being with me. Just fucking drove him insane. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't have a gas cap. It didn't come with one. There wasn't one in the car when I got it. Can you buy one? Can, maybe, yeah, maybe I should see if I can buy one. I didn't even think of that. I know there have always been signs, yeah. Yeah, I need to go get a gas cap, yeah, and see if that fixes it, and then we'll know. I know, it's really hard to fucking accept. It's really hard. I mean, it's not all my fault, but I can't help but take some of the blame, you know? Like, if I could have been better, if I would have gotten help, if I would have gotten therapy, maybe he wouldn't have had, you know, felt like he had to do this. I thought that we were going to grow old together. I thought we were going to be together forever. I never thought he would hurt me like this. And it's just so hard to accept. I know he should have left me before doing this, I know. But I feel like he felt some kind of responsibility for me. Because he'd cared for me for so long, you know. I feel like he felt I feel like I feel like he felt some kind of responsibility for me and I feel like he loved me in a way. I mean, there's no way that he can't that he doesn't love me. But I I don't think he's in love with me anymore. I mean, obviously he's not. And that hurts a lot because I'm still in love with him. And going through Missouri, I think would take too long. I have done that route before. Yeah, I mean, I was his wife. I was his wife for 11 years. I know, like, everyone says I can do better, I can get someone better, but, like, in my mind, I can't think of anyone better. I mean, obviously, I haven't met the person yet, but, like, I just can't imagine anybody being better for me. He was a perfect match for me besides all of his bullshit. And when we first met, I used to think, like, he's so stable. It was exactly what I needed because I'm unstable, and I need somebody who... I, I can't be with somebody who's as unstable as me because it's a shitstorm. That was, like, my first husband. Oh, boy. If I would have been vlogging during my first marriage, holy shit. Whew. That, that was, that was, a uh, my God. And when I met Andrew, I was like, oh my God, he's so stable and he's like so perfect for me and he's so chill and stuff. But I had no idea what was going on underneath that shit. Yeah. Um, I stayed single for about two years after my first husband let's see he was gonna turn 24 so i was 22 it was two years two years from my first husband to andrew i did have a rebound relationship in the in there in the middle of that but it didn't it didn't mean anything to me um thank you so much mr roboto wishing you a massive cathartic and spiritual release at the king gizzard concert i'm gonna have it i'm gonna have it for sure 
it's going to be, I know it's going to be a wonderful experience and I'm really looking forward to it and I think it's going to help me a lot. And I'm worried, so I'm worried it's going to take me, you know, two years to get over this and then I'm going to be 42 and the chances of me having a child are very slim. So I don't know. I just feel like my whole future is gone now. I got nothing, I got nothing left to lose. I got nothing to care about. I'm just, I'm just out here wilding, you know? Do I ever say my opinion of adoption? I'm not, um, I don't think I could adopt. Like, I don't think they would let me adopt. And I'm, I don't really want to either because a lot of times if you adopt like like there's no way I could adopt a baby because it's really really expensive to get a baby um I could adopt from foster care but I don't feel like I'm equipped to handle a child from foster care because a lot of times they have a lot of issues and I just don't feel like you know I could do that yeah I do I just feel like I'm existing right now I'm existing I'm surviving somehow, but, and sometimes I'm destructive because I'm in so much pain that I just do stupid shit because I don't care. I feel like I have nothing to care about. The only thing I care about are my dogs. And, you know, I care about my friends and family and stuff like that, but I mean, like, in my immediate life. Um, well, most women with PCOS have sus have sustained fertility through age 42, is what studies show. So, I feel like after 42, I'm probably going to be fucked. No, I haven't been watching anything. I haven't been watching anything. I just... Um, I just sit here and cry, honestly. I walk my dogs, I sit here and cry. I did some laundry today because I had to have clean clothes to take with me. I haven't, I'm not like doing very well. Last, oh wait, last night I watched some YouTube shorts when I was trying to fall asleep. Freezing your eggs is really expensive and very invasive, and I don't, I, and also the few fertility clinics that I looked into, you have to be under 40 to freeze your eggs. So I don't even know if they'll do it for me at, at, at 40 years old. Laura Lenny had her son at 50. Damn. She probably had IVF. She, mu she had to have had IVF. No, I'm not going to fight her. I don't want to fight her. I just, I watch YouTube shorts if I need to, if I want to watch something because it's the only thing I can really like. I can only focus for like a few seconds at a time and even that's hard because then like shorts will come on like Andrew and I were watching Bad Friends together which is like one of my favorite podcasts but we were watching that on YouTube together and we pay play little drinking games with it and stuff and it was so fun and then on YouTube shorts I'll get little shorts of that and then it just makes me feel like I want to die so it's it's really hard for me to watch anything. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat girl with the plum bob tattoo. I just got diagnosed with PCOS at 29, so my hopes are pretty low about it too. I seriously feel you. Never thought infertility would be my journey. I know. It sucks. It sucks. But at 29, you still have plenty of time. I was able to normalize my cycles enough to get pregnant, and uh, I feel like I could have done it again if all this didn't happen. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to expend my energy on her, so 
my tarot cards did warn me about this and I refused to listen to it. I was like, no, I have to be interpreting those wrong. That can't be true. Yeah. Bye, Nathan. Thank you for staying. I know it's very late where you are. Thank you for staying when you could. Oh, thank you, camp girl. Wait, camping girl. Sorry. I can't, I can't see very well in the chat. It's like way over there. Uh, she says, Cindy, I've been in your very shoes. It hurts like hell, but guaranteed you will get over it as time goes on and you'll look back and wonder what you ever saw in him. Hang in there. I can't wait to get to that point because right now I just, I still want him. I still love him. Like, I wouldn't take him back, but like my heart aches for him, you know, and it hurts. It fucking hurts so much that I just, sometimes I don't even know how I can go on. I don't even know how I'm going to make it through the day, through the hour. I don't know how I'm going to get anything done. I can't concentrate on anything. I can't read anything. I can't watch anything. I barely eat. I barely sleep. It's the fucking hardest thing I've ever had to go through. Thank you for saying I look beautiful, Teresa. Appreciate that. I have no idea what lies he's told anybody. I'm sure he, I'm, I don't know how he keeps up with his web of lies that he tells um, all these different people. It's incredible. It's incredible. Very impressive to me. He's very smart. I wish I could be like one of those people that if somebody didn't want me, then I was like, well, I don't want you either. But I'm not like that. Uh, thank you so much, Josie Mushroom. Thanks for early earthy bluntness. We all okay to not be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm aching for the person I thought. It's like grieving over someone that doesn't exist because you don't know who they are anymore. Yeah. I'm grieving who I who I thought he was, who I loved who's not a real person and that's really hard it's really difficult to to understand or to wrap your mind around i know i need to show him what he's missed out on and not give him the satisfaction of destroying me i know that but it's fucking hard to do that I, that's my goal my goal is to heal from this to get better to be better, to find another partner, to move on in my life and have a happy life in the future. That's what I want. Um, but it's just really, really hard right now. Right now, I am in the very acute phase of grief. And I, I feel like I'm completely back to square one right now, like I was four months ago. I'm back to because it took me this long to get the truth. And I think it's so cruel that he didn't just tell me the truth in, in the beginning because he wanted to just keep playing me, keep holding on to me, and not have to face what he's done. Yeah, I did my therapy today, and it was really helpful. Um, I have another session next Wednesday. Yeah, there's peace in the truth. It's true. There is. There's also fucking pain in the truth. Have I thought of swapping locks on my apartment? No, nah, he doesn't have a key. But he would never, he would never come back here. Even if he did have a key. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Teresa says, I feel like people who are so harsh on you forget that you were married to this man for so many years. It's much different than any old relationship. And I guarantee most of them were never married. Yeah, I don't think people understand, like, what it's like to be with somebody for that long. The person is your entire world, you know. And it's so hard to separate from them. At least it is for me. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it's so hard. I know, if I could have moved to Hot Springs in February by myself like I planned, I might have 
yeah, I could have healed more if he would have just told me in the beginning. If he would have just told me in the beginning, I would have had four months behind me. You know, but... Nope. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I want to get it. I want to get two more piercings at least. I want to get my Lebray pierced and I want to get um, my bridge pierced right here in the future. Right now, I just haven't been able to think about that kind of thing. No, he didn't want to let me go. I know that. He didn't. He didn't want to let me go, but he felt like he had to. I guess he loves this other girl now. Yeah. Yeah, I still want to get a tattoo, too. Definitely. Um, at, when Andrew was here, we were talking about it, and I was going to go get my tattoo, like, earlier this week before we went to King Gizzard, or, like, last week before we went to King Gizzard sometime. He was going to go with me and everything. We, we like, planned it. He, I think he would still be here right now if I didn't kick him out that day. Because he told me he wasn't, he was not planning to leave that day, but, like, um, he felt, like, really rejected by me when I, when I told him to get his shit out and took his house key back, and he just left, and then I guess that's when he made that decision. Um, I think he would still be here now. I think we would have gone to King Gizzard together, and I think he would have left me after that. That's what I think. I, th I think he was eventually going to come to this decision that he wanted to go and, and raise a kid. And he would eventually have had to tell me. I asked him, I was like, if you didn't leave, if you didn't leave today, because we were talking on the phone the first day that he left. I was like, if you didn't leave today, when were you going to tell me? And he was like, I probably would have put it off until the last minute, until I absolutely had to. I feel like he was honest about that. Yeah, I'm still going to the concert. I'm not letting him take that from me. Or the second day he left. Yeah, the second day he left. Sorry, not the first day. First day we were talking on the phone, but he didn't tell me until the second day, Sunday. Yeah, he would have wasted my time and waited until he was comfortable to leave. Yeah, I think that was his plan. It'd be a bit funny if he finds out it's not his and he was lied to. I almost hope that's true. But I don't think it is. I really don't. No, he doesn't sound like he doesn't. I don't think he should be in a relationship at all. I really don't. No, I've never traveled outside the U.S., but I would really love to. I really want to go to Australia. Um, the girl is 28 years old. Yeah, she's got plenty of time to pop out some crotch fruit for him. No, I know he won't be with her forever. Yeah, I do believe in... I do believe in karma. Yeah, I do. I'm getting my karma right now. This is my karma. For the... For the terrible things that I've done. But he'll get his too.
I wasn't talking about this baby. I was talking about future unborn babies. Not the kid's fault. You stuck with him for 18 years, I guess. I should find a way to travel to Australia. I mean, I would love to. I would love to, but I don't want to go by myself. Like, Andrew and I always talked about going together. We were going to go to Japan together. We had so many plans and dreams. I'm sorry. We had so many things we were going to do together. It's really hard. I've heard Australia's really expensive. Yeah, I've heard that. I know, that's true. He didn't get to ruin those places for me. That's true. I don't want to travel by myself. I don't like to travel by myself. I'm about to travel by myself tomorrow, but I don't like it. <laughs> But that's just driving. That's not like going across, you know, international or something. Yeah, he was hurt that I took control and told him to leave. Yeah, he was really hurt by that. He like actually was. He told him that he told me that was the ultimate rejection for him. Because I told him to get out and give me his key. He would still be here if I didn't do that. And I probably wouldn't know. Yet. I wouldn't know yet. I know he shouldn't be hurt, but I mean, you know, he deserves to be hurt too. I, I think that's true. I have hurt him. I've hurt him a lot in our marriage. Just because he hurt me doesn't mean that his hurt is any less valid, you know? I believe that. You like to travel alone is the best feeling of freedom. <laughs> I have been loyal, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she was re- Well, she was really pissed that he was with me for the past two weeks. Yeah, she was. Um, because when I called her, she was pissed. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing she said. When I said, uh, can I- t I need to talk to Andrew, and she said, why? So you- so you guys can get together and fuck? She said that. And I said, no, I will never let him touch me again because all I can do is see him on top of you. That's what I told her. We were not nice to each other. That's so Sims, I know. <sighs> yeah, she's not classy. But she was, I could tell she was bitter and jealous about that, that she knew he'd been with me. Yeah, that's what she fucking said. I'm glad she's jealous. I don't even care if that's petty, whatever. I should have said yep. <laughs> I should have. I should have been like, yeah. Oh, oh, she also said, uh, when I said, he's been fucking me the whole time that I've been with you, and she was like, yeah, and you've been trying to get him back this whole time. I'm like, yeah, I have, because he's my husband. 
But that was before I knew, you know, before I knew the extent of it. Yeah. I know, I'm like, she, yeah, she's got some fucking nerve. Um, yeah, she has my number. I actually called her on my Google Voice number and not my main number because I was worried, like, that Andrew was going to be there and he would be like, no, that's Cindy, don't answer that. You know what I mean? If I called from my main number, so I called from my Google Voice number and she picked it up. I couldn't believe she picked up. She picked up twice. She picked up once and then she hung up on me and then I called her back and she picked up again. And then she didn't pick up again. I called her again. She didn't pick up after that. I went back and looked at all the phone numbers on Andrew's, um, on the, like, so like with Verizon, you can go back and look at the history, the call history. And I saw this one number that had called his phone like a whole bunch of times right around the time it was like right around the time one time that he had come back with me and I was like that's got to be her number and so I wrote it down and there was like two different numbers I don't know if that another one was like some other number she was using but anyway I called that one it was her no she didn't let me talk to him he told me he wasn't there, which I know was a lie. He was probably right there. Yeah, he's very messy about it. <laughs> Detective Cindy, I know. I was like, I'm going to find some way. I'm going to find some way. Yeah, it was his coworker. They definitely fought over me. Oh, I know they did. He told me they did. He told me that they that um they would get in fights over me and that she was like really jealous of me and stuff. He should have been. He's really, really good, Spacey J. That's how I didn't know for so long. He's really he's a silver tongue devil. And he knows how to play me. He knows all the things to say and do. <laughs> I should have said, hi, is this a trash company? Because I just sent my trash off to you. <laughs> I think he's having a midlife crisis. I think I am also having a midlife crisis. I think both of us have just gone off the fucking deep end. I really do. And we both just fucking destroyed our own lives. Your husband of 15 years also worked at Pizza Hut and just left you this year for another girl. What in the fuck, man? That's crazy. I should have said, how do you like my sloppy seconds? <laughs> That's what I should have said. How are you enjoying those sloppy seconds over there? <laughs> Some Pizza Hut guys, man. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to get divorced. And there's no way I can stay married to him. <laughs> Don't ever let your husband work at Pizza Hut, y'all. It ain't gonna it ain't gonna end well. What in the hut? <laughs> My plan moving forward, I don't even know. I'm so lost and confused and hurt. Like I don't even I can barely even get through a day. Um my plan right now is the only thing I'm focused on is my trip that I'm going on tomorrow. I'm going to Colorado, I'm getting my plates on my car. Finally, I am going to see King Gizzard and then I'm coming home and then I'm, I don't know. I'm going to continue my therapy. I'm going to start making vlogs and start trying to heal. Um, I'm talking to these dudes. I don't know. I'm going to go on some dates maybe. 
Yeah. It's just, that's what my therapist told me today. She said, one thing at a time, one moment at a time. That's what I have to do. So we went all the, like, basically we went back to like our first therapy session. Like we got to start all over now. Cause you're, you know, you're back to the beginning. So let's do it. We're going to do one moment at a time, one thing at a time. Oh, I know I have to open my packages back there. I know I do. Um, but I'm just like, I don't know if I can do it right now. I got that pile of packages back there. I don't know where he works now. I'm sure he's got another job by now or a job interview or something. He, he always gets a job. He doesn't like not having money. I feel so bad because I know people sent this shit to me so long ago and I just, I just haven't been able to do it. I'll open a package to celebrate day one when I get to day one. Right now I'm like day negative five. I'm a catch. Thank you, Spacey J. I hope I find someone in no time. And I feel like, like, I have so many flaws. Like, how am I ever going to find anybody again that would put up with my shit, you know? And that would, somebody that would, I feel like also, like, I'm not that great physically. So, I don't know. It's going to be hard. Like, I have all this fucking loose skin for my weight loss. Like, my hair's thinning for my PCOS. And I just feel like I'm not that attractive in real life. And it's going to be hard for me to find somebody that I'm attracted to that would also be attracted to me. It's like, it's hard. And I'm old, you know? I don't know, I'm just trying to be realistic about the situation. I did lose a lot of weight, but underneath my clothes, I look like a melted ice cream cone. Okay. I'm like, I got a lot of loose skin. I'm very self-conscious about it. Someday I'll show it to you in a vlog. I think when I get to 100 pounds lost, I'll show you. I'll show you what's going on under the hood. Um, Andrew was going to help me with my skin surgery, but now I have nobody to help me, so I don't know if I'll ever get that done. I will lift weights eventually when I feel like I can, when I feel like I can do something. I was lifting weights for a little while when I was still in Colorado, but then all a bunch of shit happened. I don't have false teeth, but I do have some fake teeth. Like all these right here, that's a, those are implants. I have an implant back here or back over here. I had to get all these teeth taken out and implant put implants put in. But they're screwed into my jaw, so they're like permanent teeth. No, lifting weights does not tone loose skin, but it does kind of help like fill up some of this. If you build muscle, it'll fill up some of the space, but you're still gonna have loose skin. Like I'm still gonna have to get surgery. Like look at this. This is my arms. Look at my arms. You see that? See all that shit? All that right there? That's going to have to be like cut off. I hate that. My arms are the thing that bothers me the most. Um, I hate it. And I hate summertime because I have to wear short sleeve shirts and then my fucking arm skin's all hanging out and I hate it. But that's the first thing I'm going to get taken care of. And most people when they lose a lot of weight, like the first thing they do is their stomach. But I'm like, no, I want my arms done first. Because nobody can see my stomach. But I have to wear short sleeve shirts and my arm skin's all flopping around. Like, I want that taken care of. Then my next thing would be stomach and breasts. Because I'm going to get a breast lift because this shit is saggy as hell. Because I lost so much weight in my boobs. My boobs are, like, so small now compared to how they used to be. And then my thighs will be last. And my ass. I have loose skin on my 
fucking ass, man. It's weird. It's uncomfortable, too. It's uncomfortable. So, I'm getting it all done, eventually. If I ever find somebody who cares enough about me to, like, help me recover from that. If not, well, then I guess, who cares? I'll just keep all this shit on me. I'll just be flabby forever. Hang gliding? I would never do that. I'm terrified of heights. Um, I, I have some stretch marks on my stomach. Because um, when I was pregnant and also when I was really fat, I got stretch marks on my stomach. And I have like a little bit on my thighs too. But they're not like that bad. My highest weight was 232 pounds. And, um, oh, I weighed myself today. I weigh 142 pounds. So I've lost, what is that, 90 pounds? I've lost 90 pounds. And, uh... Yeah, so I am loose as a goose under here. <laughs> so when I get a tattoo, my first tattoo is going to be on my forearm because it's the only place where I'm not going to get surgery. My forearms and my calves are the only place I'm not going to get surgery, like basically from my thighs to my neck. <laughs> I'm 5'1". I'm 5'1". I'm very short. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to eat anything tonight. I ate one McDonald's McDouble, like the two patties earlier today. That was all I've had. I was like, I got really hungry today. I was like, my body needs some food. So I ate that. I couldn't really stomach anymore. I know people think I'm not eating enough, but it's like I'm in, in acute grief right now. Like, imagine how you feel when somebody dies. That's kind of how it feels. Like, I don't want to eat right now. Yeah, some doctors are not, like, don't approve of carnivore, but I don't give a shit. It worked for me really well. But I'm, I'm not very healthy right now because I'm not, like, I'm not doing a great job right now. Because I can't. I just, I can't focus on anything. Yeah, when you got dumped, you didn't eat well for months. I know, it's just hard to, like, that's not a priority. When you're in this much pain, it's just not a priority. It's like, I eat when my stomach hurts so bad that I can't, that I, like, I know I have to eat something. And I just eat a little bit and wait till the next time I have to eat. I don't think about it or anything. It sucks being short because it's really hard to find clothes to fit you. Um, but luckily we have um, an old navy here and they have short sizes and they fit me really well on, on jeans. You didn't eat and sleep well for a year? Yeah. I'm not sleeping well at all. Last night I took a Benadryl to go to sleep and, and, and a melatonin. And then I woke up at like 4 o'clock in the morning. I took another melatonin. And I woke up at 7. And that was the most sleep I've had. That was the most sleep I've had in like weeks probably. Even with, when Andrew was here, I wasn't sleeping well because we were like going out and partying every night. How do I know he won't come back? Because he's going to raise his child with his new woman. He told me very clearly that that was his choice. The only time you lost weight was when I cut out bread and pasta. The only time I lost weight is when I went carnivore. Like, I don't do perfect carnivore right now because I'm, like, hurting a lot. So, I mean, I'm drinking alcohol. I'm drinking a lot of Diet Coke. Um, and I'm eating a lot of, like, McDonald's burgers, burger patties, because it's just all I can do to keep myself alive right now. I mean, obviously alcohol is not keeping me alive, but it's, it kind of is. It kind of is. In a different way. I took 10 grams of melatonin, and then I woke up, yeah, I woke up after, like, four hours. 
And then, so then I took another one. I was like, fuck it, I gotta sleep. You can become dependent on any of the sleep aids, but if I don't take them, I will not sleep at all. So, and sometimes I don't sleep at all even when I do take them. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That was my, my dog's, she, she's dreaming and she's doing little beep, beep, beep. She's doing little yelps in her sleep. She's dreaming. She must be like barking in her sleep. Yeah, he's dreaming. She's probably chasing cats in her dreams. Yeah, that was Bell Bell. <laughs> I never took Zoloft. I take Wellbutrin. And what's crazy is I feel like it was finally starting to work. Um, when Andrew was here, like it finally started to kick in, but now I'm like just so, so fucked up that it, it nothing can help me right now. Yeah, riff riff. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I I will I would like to use more herbs and stuff, but I just I can't. I'm having a really hard time just doing like any kind of day-to-day -day tasks, just caring for myself at all. So I'm just doing the best I can. It's not great, but I'm somehow keeping myself alive. I'm somehow making it through this. It's very difficult and I know I'm not great and I'm no fucking role model or anything. So please don't anybody do what I'm doing. I'm just telling you what I'm, what I'm going through. It's not good. It's not healthy. It's just what I'm doing to keep myself you know, going from day to day. Wellbutrin works way better for me than SSRIs. I think it, because um, I used to be on Prozac before that. I think it just depends on your brain chemistry. You lost 20 pounds when you were dumped in two weeks, yeah. I've lost about eight pounds in the last um, week, so... I know that's not good. You really don't want to do that. The last time I weighed myself, I was 150, and today I weighed myself, I was 142. But I've literally barely eaten anything in the past three days. And I'm not saying that to brag or to, like, um, promote that in any way. I don't. It's just, that's what, I, that's what I'm fucking going through. I can't, I have a really hard time eating right now. Yeah, I spoke to B earlier. He was on the stream earlier. I'm going to call him after I'm done streaming and talk to him. I talk to him pretty much almost every day. The loft really helped you. Um, no, nobody's ever prescribed me so loft. I was on Prozac and um, I re I had so many side effects on Prozac. It was insane. And so then I started taking Wellbutrin after that because it, my doctor was like, well, why don't we try this because it has way less side effects and it worked really well for me. My face looks slimmer, yeah. I look like my mom now. When, so when I saw my older brother, I told you my older brother came when Andrew was still here to see us. And uh, he hadn't seen me since I lost all this weight. He hadn't seen me since I was like really fat. And, he, and the first thing he said was, you look just like mom. <laughs> I was like, I know, especially from my side, like I have my mama's nose and I have her like jaw and I never knew that. I never thought I looked like my mom at all until I lost weight. And then like, I have the same face. He's like, your, your face looks just like mom. I'm like, I know. I started the carnivore diet. I think it was in September of last year, September or October. Um, I don't remember. It was sometime late last year. Because it was after I lost the baby. That's true, Mr. Roboto. An SSRI affecting serotonin could help me more than Wellbutrin and dopamine. That's true. But I feel like a, my problem has always been dopamine. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I, did, I ate today, Claudia. I ate a McDouble 
burger patty today. That's all I had, but it was something. Um, I'm not really close to Mrs. B. We don't really have a lot in common. We've never like really been close or anything, so not really. I like her and everything, but we just like we don't really have a lot in common and stuff. Yes, my family knows. Well, they know we're not together. They don't know about this yet. They're going to know now, though. They're going to know now. I'll probably call my sister tomorrow. I want to go, well, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe when I get back from Colorado, I'll call her because I want to go see her. And I'm going to get together with my stepdad soon, too. They can lecture all they want to. It doesn't matter. I have to do what I have to do to survive right now. I think the concert's going to be really good for me. I think it's going to be a really awesome experience. I'm worried that it's going to be really painful, though. Because, the you know, every time I've seen King Gizzard, it's been with Andrew. And we've, like, danced together and had such a great time and stuff. And it's going to be really hard to go to this without him. But I feel like it's something that I have to do for myself, you know? I don't know if I have bipolar disorder, and actually Andrew brought this up to me um, when he was here, that I might have, I might be bipolar, I don't know. Um, because I felt like I'm, so I I didn't think I that I had like mania and stuff. I didn't think I had like manic episodes and stuff because you don't get that with BPD. But when I looked back on the things that I did, especially when I went to Colorado, I feel like it, I could have been manic, but I don't know. Um, I don't know, and I have never had a diagnosis of that, so um, I don't know. I probably need to see a psychiatrist. I really, I mean, I really don't know. The only thing I've been formally diagnosed with is borderline personality disorder and PTSD. Did I find anyone to go with you? Uh, yeah, I have somebody going to King Gizzard with me. Yeah. You think I was in a desperate state, not manic? That could be true, too. That could be true. I just, I honestly don't know. I don't feel like I've, I don't, I just, I, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't have enough self-awareness to know. But I mean, I can't diagnose myself, so I don't know. Well, like, Andrew and I were talking, like, about our mutual, not mutual, but our individual mental illnesses together. Um, we were talking, like, he was talking about, like, his, his ADHD shit, and I was talking about my BPD shit, and we were, like, trying to figure out what the fuck was wrong with us. And, uh, we, and then we started talking about bipolar, and I was like, I think, you know, he was like, maybe you do, you know, have it, and I was like, maybe I do, I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to diagnose myself. But I might try to get into a psychiatrist. But the wait for a psychiatrist in my town is literally like three months. Because Andrew was on the wait list to see a psychiatrist. Yeah, I mean, I'm still seeing my therapist, yeah. I have an anxious attachment style, and Andrew has an avoidant attachment style, so it's really fucking toxic. 
And we were both trying to like work on that at one point. Or at least I was. I think he was just pretending to. Yeah, I've heard of CPTSD, but I, I don't know. My therapist just told me PTSD. You had manic episodes with BPD? I didn't know you could have manic episodes. I'm not diagnosing myself with anything or trying to. I'm just saying, like, it might be a possibility. I don't know. But I have BPD. That's all I know for sure. Yeah, I mean, I do. Yeah, it's from childhood trauma. I have, in, I have extreme childhood trauma, which is why I'm like this. I don't think he did attempt to control his urges, curly girly. I don't think he did. As far as your tags, state police will generally not pull you over for expired tags if they're out of state. My tags are Arizona tags because Carvana's like dealership is in Arizona, so they give you Arizona tags. Yeah, BPD, it, it is different for everyone because um, there's a lot of different symptoms of it, and some people don't have all of them. I don't know. I'm no expert. I only know what I experience. I have most of the symptoms. I'm fucked. I am going to focus on healing. I mean, I really have no choice. I have no other choice. What am I going to do? I have to try to get through this somehow. Uh, thank you so much, Josie Mushroom, for the super chat. What's your Myers Briggs personality? I have no idea. I don't. I mean, I've taken it before, but I don't remember. I think I'm INJ, INTJ, or INFJ. I can't remember which one. Looking back, do I see any signs that he was cheating and he knew she was pregnant? No, I don't at all. I had no idea. No idea. The quiz is too long. I don't want to do the quiz right now. I'll do it someday. I'll tell you. You're INFJ. I think I'm INFJ, but I might be INTJ. I can't remember. Or maybe INFP. I'm IN something. The dogs are fine. They're just sleeping down here right now. I'm going to take them out here in a little bit for their nightly walk. Your husband is your person, and sometimes when he leaves for a period of time for work, you feel like you could die. Yeah, that's how I used to feel, too. That's how I used to feel about Andrew. I mean, he's still my person, so that's why it's really, really hard for me. I still want him back. And, like, literally, I feel like I would just desperately do anything to get him back. But, but I mean, even at this point, I can't. But, like, I told my therapist today... Because she was telling me, like, there's a possibility when this is all over and he's getting real stressed out, he's going to want to come to you for comfort. And I was like, I'm afraid I'll let him in because I want comfort too. And so she's going to try to help me to deal with that. You know, I know it would never be the same. I could never. I, could, I know I could never have, like, our old life back or anything. I'm sorry. I just imagine him like having that family and it just hurts so much. It hurts so much because I it should have been my family. This should have been my baby. And he gave it to her. Thank you, just Jamie. Uh, Cindy, I hope you heal. Please don't use chat for help. I know. I know. My eyes remind you of Elizabeth Taylor. Wow, that's really sweet. She had beautiful eyes.
I've never thought about going on a retreat. I've thought about going on a an ayahuasca retreat. I really want to do that. I feel like it could be very beneficial to me, especially right now. Yeah, I mean, I got blessed with these eyelashes. I know that. <laughs> I have, these are my, I don't have any mascara or anything. That's just my eyelashes. They're just, that's what they look like. Like, there's nothing on there. There's nothing on there. Um, I got blessed with these. Everybody in my dad's side of the family has these beautiful, thick fucking eyelashes. When, when I put mascara on, like, I put mascara on, and when I went out with one of my friends, she was like, it looks like you have fake lashes on. I'm like, no, they're my real, I swear they're my real lashes. Oh, Elizabeth Taylor was born with double lashes. Oh, do I have double lashes? I don't know what that is. Maybe I do. If I do that from a bad place, I'll go into full-blown psychosis. I don't know. I don't think I will. Thank you, Danny Sue. For saying, I'm sorry you're going through all this shit, Cindy, and you do not deserve this. You're a beautiful person, and you'll get your happy ending one day with someone who truly appreciates you. I certainly hope so. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like my eyes. My eyes are not symmetrical, which bothers me. But um, I, I think they're still my best feature. <laughs> My, my, um, my older brother, I look a lot like my older brother, and he has the same eyelashes as me. But I'm the only one who has green eyes like my grandpa. I was the only one of the grandchildren that got his green eyes. I feel like if I never let myself get so fat, then I would have been more attractive because, like, now I have all this, like, flabby skin all over me, which makes me really self-conscious. Is my older brother hot? Like, I can't not answer that for you. He's my brother. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry you went through that too, Drew's abandoned paranormal vlog. <laughs> he told me, like, he told me that he loved that I always took care of him. Like, he always felt, like, safe with me as far as, like, I always made sure all of our bills were paid, and I always took care of all that, and he really appreciated that. He did tell me that one time. Like, over the past two weeks, he told me that. But I don't know if it was just more of his bullshit. Because I asked him, what do you like about me? What do you value about me? He told me that. He told me that he valued how loyal and that I was to him. He told me he valued... Um, my sense of humor and all the fun we had together and he told me some other stuff too but I don't want to say that I know everybody says I can do better but it's just like hard to imagine for me well I mean honestly he was more like like, I parentified him way more than he did to me. Yeah, I'm incredibly loyal to my friends, my partners. I'm very loyal. Loyal. Yeah, I'll be, I'm, I've been streaming for two hours and 55 minutes. I need Goopy Gills Carbo. Give it to me, Goopy! You can do better as in you can find someone who loves you properly. I don't know. I don't have a lot of hope. I don't have a lot of hope. 
Maybe I will in the future. Uh, thank you so much, Ivy, for the super chat. As a female, I must say you're a knockout and gorgeous. I'd ask you on a date for sure. I hope that doesn't sound strange. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel like I don't look this good in person. <laughs> People who meet me in person are going to be like, you don't look like you have that many wrinkles on the stream. I always just wanted him to love me. I just wanted him to love me as much as I loved him. And I feel like he used to. But over the since he met her, I guess he doesn't anymore. <laughs> Do I like the song Rattlesnake by King Gizzard? Yes, I love it. I love it. A lot of people think that it's repetitive and they don't like it, but I love it. I don't think he knows how to love either. I don't. I don't think he was loved properly as a, ch as a child and a teenager. He has a lot of issues. Like, I know a lot of his... We've talked in depth about these kind of things. I don't think he got enough love and acceptance from his family or his peers when he was young and now he just what he does I don't think he knows how to love either you're just grooving to rattlesnake with your friends it's a good one it's a really good one I don't hate him I don't hate Andrew I never will I mean sometimes I feel like so much anger at him I'm like I hate him but I don't really hate him I, I really love him still. Even though he's done this, I love him. <laughs> Sorry. I do love him. You'll hate him for me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Triggered Latina, for the super chat. I'm number one. <laughs> thank you. You still love, your ex did the same thing and you still love the man you knew. You don't know who he is anymore. That's exactly how I feel. I love the man that I knew, the man that I married, the man that I spent so many years with. I don't know who, who that is now. It's not the Andrew that I loved. And that hurts a lot. It's like he doesn't, the man I love doesn't exist anymore. And I don't know how I'm supposed to cope with that. It's like a death. Thank you, Nick. That's the only thing I can really do is work on myself. It really is. Thank you, Triggered Latina, again. <laughs> Aw, thank you. What does that say? Number one, <laughs> little fox, thank you. I know, I stood in this hallway right here, right before he left, and I said, and I looked directly in his eyes, and I said, nobody will ever love you as much as I do. And I believe that's true. I don't think anybody could ever love him as much as I do. And he threw it all away. So he could get fucked. Yeah. He's a cowardish boy, yeah. True. You believe he'll try to be back with me? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I will do more hiking videos eventually. Right now I'm just trying to survive. So as of today, this is going to be the last live or video or anything for like five days probably because tomorrow I'm going to Colorado, but I'm going to vlog the whole time. And then when I get back, I'll post the vlogs from the trip. And then I'll start vlogging again after that. And I'll open the mail when I get back.
Uh, thank you so much, Tattoo Central, for the super chat. The hardest part of ending is starting again. Stay strong, Cindy. We love you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I can't get bangs because my hair is too thin. Like, see how thin it is right here? If I get bangs, it'll just be like a couple of strings. It'll look really bad. Um, no, I'm going to get plates on the Carvana car because I finally got the paperwork. They finally got it done. So I'm going to get plates on it tomorrow. Or it'll be in two days, actually, when I get to Colorado. But I'm just going to drive it illegally and hope I don't get pulled over. And if I do, I'll just pay the fine. Yeah. Do I think he chose her because as a child? Yes. I think if she wasn't pregnant, he would have chosen me. Yeah. I do believe that. And I would have taken him, too. Honestly. Thank you for saying my hair looks really pretty right now. Uh, thank you so much, Mandy Sim Landy, for the super chat. Thank you. I do. I feel so much support from you guys, and I truly appreciate it. I really do. I mean, it helps me a lot. Streaming and talking to you guys really helps me a lot. And I, I appreciate all of you. Whose idea was it for you to move back to Arkansas, yours or his? Well, we were texting one day, and I said, I just want to go home. And he said, I'll pack up the car right now and go home with you. And I said, let's go. And then we did it. Like in one, we did it in like an hour. He went and got his shit from her house, which I didn't know he was staying with her at that time. Um, but I was at our house packing up the shit. He went and got his shit from her and then we left. So it, like I said, I want to go home. And he said, if you mean that, I'll get in the car with you right now and go home. And we did. It was kind of like a mutual thing, but I guess I brought it up first. I do not think he did that to get out of, to get me out of the way or bring me back here and leave. I don't. Um, I truly believe he wanted to leave, to run away from that, to run away with me. He told me he wanted to run away into the sunset with me and leave all that shit behind. And he wanted to, he, I feel like he really did want that. That he thought he could escape everything that he'd done and that we could just go be together again and he could... He could just leave it behind, but in the end, he couldn't, he couldn't hide it. He couldn't hide it from me anymore. He couldn't, he couldn't, <coughs> couldn't escape it. Is there a shadow person out there? Dogs! I didn't even hear anything. I know he's going to regret it. He told me so many times that he just wanted to run away with me and, and he he wanted to be with me and he wanted to just, you know, he didn't want any of that. This was before I knew about the kid, but he was just talking about like sleeping around with her and stuff. He said he didn't want any of that and he just wanted to run away with me and forget that he had cheated and all that and leave all that behind. Now I know when he was saying he wanted to leave all that behind what he really meant. But at the time, I thought he just meant like the affair and everything. So, yeah, he told me so many times he just wanted to run away with me. And, and he finally told me he couldn't do it. Yeah, they work together. Yeah. I mean, I think he did mean that. I, like, recently I've been able to tell when he's sincere and when he's not. I didn't used to be able to tell, but recently he's just, like, lost it. He's lost it, and I've been able to tell. Yeah, I mean, I feel for that kid, too. It's going to be a fucking mess over there. It really is. <sighs> Color of the day is white. 
white today, but I didn't have anything white. I mean, I know. I mean, he was torn between us. I really think he was torn between us. And in the end, it was the kid that that made the decision for him. I think he would have chosen me if it weren't for that. Yeah, that's exactly right, triggered Latina. This was probably hard for him, too, because I was willing to forgive stuff, and he knew... I wouldn't forgive the baby. He did want to fix things, but he dug himself so deep. Yep. He told me that he, things just kept spiraling out of control and that he just kept making so many mistakes and just he couldn't get himself out of it anymore. And he just couldn't hide it from me anymore. I think he does feel regret. And I think he did love me. He had to make a decision. And I guess he did the right thing. Even though that means that he left me completely fucking destroyed. Not about me anymore. <sighs> no, she's, she's definitely pregnant. Yeah. I know for sure. What would you do when he, okay, so he said yes, would go? I don't know what that means. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice but to choose the baby. I mean, he, he did this and it destroyed all of us. Destroyed both of us. I can't believe he even risked getting her pregnant either. You should have heard me screaming at him. On the phone. He told me she... So we were talking on the phone for two days. He told me she was pregnant on the phone before he sent the goodbye me message. He told me she was pregnant on the phone. And then I was like, what the fuck? And then... I screamed at him, like, how could you fucking do that? How could you not use a fucking condom? You had a drawer full of fucking condoms in, in our home, and you can just take one of those with you, you stupid son of a bitch. That's what I told him. And then, like, after we got out of that argument, that's when he sent me that message saying that he chose and all that. Which, I mean, at that point, after I already knew, I was like, well, I mean, I already knew that's what was going to happen. She does not have a job. I don't think. At least that's what he told me. I don't know. Could be a lie. I think he didn't because he likes to do risky things. He he likes to fucking do risky behaviors and stuff. Thank you, Mandy, Sam, Landy. Um... Your second best to nobody, baby or not. Oh, and thank you, Jody Ann, if I didn't say so for the super chat. Thank you. She is pregnant, 100%. She is. No, I'm not going to contact her. I already contacted her once and it didn't do me any fucking good. He'll, he probably already has a job. He probably just went and got his old job back or something. He'll He's... He's a fucking slippery snake, man. He'll go he'll get a job in like two days. He'll slither his way into something. No, he loves that child. I asked him, Do you love this child? And he said, Yeah. That was our conversation. I, and I actually ended up hanging up on him because I was so upset. I was so upset when he told me that I hung up on him. And then uh, he sent me that message. And I never talked to him again after that.
No, I don't hate the child. No, it's not the child's fault. He slithered his way inside something. Yeah. How is my body feeling around my neck area? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. You mean like, do I have loose, I do have loose skin. It's like a little wobbly right there. I really don't like it at all. I think after I get all my skin surgery on my body, I'll have like a, have like that lifted up or something. She does not know about my YouTube. I asked him, did you, does she know about my YouTube channel? And he said, no, he wouldn't tell her because he doesn't want her to know probably all the stuff he's been lying to her about. I said, well, what does she think I do? And he said, I told her you just do like online work and stuff. So, but who knows? I don't know if anything he says is true. But as far as he told me, she does not know. And um, I don't think he would tell her, honestly. I feel bad for the child, yeah, I do. Being born into that shit show. Yeah, he did love August. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I don't think she does know about it. I really don't. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, he's lying to her. Their relationship is going to be based on lies and deception and cheating. Like, it's not a good foundation at all. He doesn't know how to stop lying. He's a he's a pathological liar. I told him, I think you're a pathological liar. And he said, yeah, I think you're right. Like, he knows he is. Would I help the child if they ever came to you for help? Yes. Yeah. She knew he she knew he was pregnant the whole time. I'm pregnant. She knew he was married the whole time, not pregnant. She knew he was married the whole time. We had a drawer full of condoms from like years and years ago. They're expired. But he still could have used one. Still would have been better than nothing. Because we used to not want to have children. Some of you guys will remember that when we used to be. We used to not want to have kids. So we used condoms then and we just had like a bunch of them. But we haven't used them for years and years. Do I read the subreddits? No. No. Why would I do that to myself? Nope. She got the sloppy seconds. I know, it's so crazy. Yeah, the subreddits are pretty gross. Um, I read them when I first found out about them and it just like really destroyed me. So I don't, I don't ever go on there anymore. It's not worth it to me. I don't even really read my YouTube comments anymore either very much. I'll read a couple now and then, but... She knew and still knows, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys for your love. I appreciate it. Yeah, and the one time when I went on there and read, it was just like a bunch of bullshit and like everything was wrong. It was just like a bunch of speculation that was just insane and like not even close to reality. So um, eh, it doesn't, I don't give a shit just gives me more um more viewers to my channel so whatever um i didn't see what they said there i'm not scrolling back up for it i don't care i didn't do tarot today 
Today's been a really hard day because I had therapy and I talked about all this in therapy and then I did the stream and talked about all this in the stream and it's just been, it's been a lot. And now I have to try to like pack my shit up for my trip tomorrow and I'm just feeling really bad and I gotta drive nine and a half hours tomorrow and I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm emotionally drained. Reading Rainbow premiered 40 years ago today. Wow, I love Reading Rainbow. Take a look in a book. Reading Rainbow. I have no idea Rose's ability, why he was toing and throwing. I don't know. I think he was really torn. I think he was really torn about what he should do. Have I heard about... No, I haven't heard about that, Sophie. They asked if you sent armpit pictures to Andrew. What the fuck does that mean? Armpit pictures? I, I listened to a familiar witch tarot. I did listen to her tarot reading today, but I think I did. No, I don't think I did today. I don't think I did today. Uh, thank you so much, aka Mitty. Uh, we love you, Cindy, and we believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know. What the fuck? Armpit pictures? What the hell is that? Let's all send armpit pictures to each other. Sexy armpit. Oh, man. Yeah, I was going to try to shave my legs tonight, but now I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to go to King Gizzard with hairy ass legs. How long did it take me to lose the weight? Um, it took me about two years, but I lost most of the weight in like the past like um, year. I lost most of it in the past year. But I started losing weight like two years ago. But then I had a pregnancy, so that kind of interfered with it. The armpit of love. <laughs> The, you've read the actor John Cusack has an armpit fetish, really? Arm pictures. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, I don't play The Sims anymore. I, I, but what if I find a like sexy hippie in a drug rug to hook up with at King Gizzard, and then I have hairy legs? Oh, he probably wouldn't care. He's a hippie. <laughs> That's never going to happen because I don't have the courage to ever approach anybody. I lost the baby at 20 weeks. Well, I didn't lose him. I gave birth to him and he died. You haven't saved your, shaved your legs in two years? See, I wish I could do that, but I turned into fucking Sasquatch. <laughs> armpits really get me going <laughs> I hope I find a perfect hippie who sees my soul too feels impossible to me right now <laughs> you turned into Sasquatch too but you don't care I might I might still take a bath tonight I got a pack and get the dog shit ready. Not dog shit, but dog things ready. <laughs> Gotta pack up that dog shit. You know what I mean. I mean, I hope the universe has something planned for me, something better. Cause right now I feel like I I feel like I don't I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. You hate the feeling of wind through your leg hair. <laughs> Oh my god. I'll be safe while traveling, don't worry. I'm doing it over two days. I used to not shave my pits, but it makes me really uncomfortable when the hair gets long. Like, I don't like the feeling of it, so I shave it now. 
I should put that on my dating profile. Armpits really get me going. <laughs> It's in Colorado where I'm going to the concert. I know it gets itchy when you have hairy pits. Yeah, I don't know how dudes walk around with all that hair under their pits. I can't stand it. Yeah, I don't like it at all. Yes, I'm going to vlog. I'm going to the concert. Yes. Yes, I will. Most of it. Because... Some things I might not be able to vlog. <laughs> you love the feeling of freshly shaved legs on clean sheets. I know it's the best feeling. It's the best feeling. And when I, on the nights that I shave my legs, I wear like my satin night nightgown and it feels so good. 40 year old Sasquatch seeks long, long man with armpit fetish. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys for making me laugh. I really appreciate that. It's been a rough day. It's been a rough couple of days. Yeah, I'm going to do a concert vlog. That's, that'll be probably the next content on here. On a hot desert highway, cold breeze through my pits. <laughs> oh, boy. It's all about finding your niche on those apps. Man, I'm not doing very well. Well, I got, I'm talking, like I said, I'm talking to three different guys. But I'm concerned that this one guy never messaged me back. Because he was the one I liked the most. And he never messaged me back, so I don't know. We were talking about witchcraft and stuff. I hope I didn't say something to freak him out. He's really cute, though. Like, I feel like he might be, he might be a little bit out of my league. <laughs> what does my tinder bio say um i don't remember i can't believe that guy that asked me about my music and i i told him what music i like and then i was like what about you and he never messaged me back i i've had no luck on tinder at all i had one guy message me and and he never messaged me back when I talked to him. How the hell do you even see it? I, I'm not reading my Tinder profile. It's too embarrassing. I don't want to read it to you. I'm like, this is cringy as fuck. I don't want to read you my my blurb about trying to get a date. Yeah, Tinder is not working for me very well at all. There's a lot of dudes on there. A lot. And I have not, mm -mm, I haven't found anybody on there. I should just post my YouTube channel as my Tinder bio. Holy shit. If somebody still wanted to talk to me after that, they might be the one for me. If they saw this shit show... And they were like, yes, I still want to talk to you. <laughs> I don't have Facebook. I don't have Facebook. Yeah, they all just want to hook up. Yeah. I mean, I'm down for casual things right now with the way I feel right now. I'm all right with it. I say that, but like, I'm not the kind of person who does that or can do that well because I get attached to people. If I like you enough to sleep with you, like, then chances are I want more than casual. Yeah, I'm just not into the casual thing, I guess. I said that, then I was like, never mind, that's not true. <laughs> Would I be willing to do blind dates? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want casual. I want something. I want somebody to, I want somebody to hold me through the night. You know what I mean? I don't want to blam bam and thank you ma'am. I want somebody to put their arms around me and, and love me. That's what I want.
You want light in Sekimoto. <laughs> No, I try to get B to hook me up with somebody, but he doesn't know anybody single. Or so he says, unless he's holding out on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Blind dates are weird because, like, I have to have an attraction to the per. Like, I need to have an attraction to the person, and it's, like, hit or miss. With I've never been on a blind date. Did I ever get in touch with my old co-worker? No. Mm -mm. I think he's probably in a relationship. If I could choose anybody to date, I would choose him, but I think he's probably, um, he's probably got somebody. I wonder if any of those guys from the 80s dating video are still single. Yes. I want the guy that dressed like a Viking. <laughs> you can't wait to hear about the concert. I can't wait to go to it. It's going to be super fun. I can't go see him at his work. That's too weird. I'm not going to do that. I I emailed him and... I mean, I, if that's not the right email address, well, there's nothing I can do. All I did is email him at the last email I had for him, and he never replied. So either that's not his email, or he doesn't want to reply to me. That's all I can do. No hamsters. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, Christina. I want the no hamsters guy. I don't know, am I a hamster? What's that even mean? Didn't we have to look that up, what that meant? I don't remember. I gotta trust in the universe. I have no, I have no other option but to believe something will come for me eventually. It's possible we could run into each other in the same town, but like there's like 35,000 people in this town and I have not run into one single person I, I know yet, which is so weird. But also I don't go a lot of places where there's a lot of people. Well, actually, I, when Andrew was here, we were going to, like, bars all the time. Honey, you got a big storm coming. <laughs> I hope it'll happen. I hate being alone. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't like it. I don't like to sleep by myself. I don't like to be by myself. I want somebody to hang out with me and watch TV and press their legs up against mine and put their arm around me like I just want that I just want that love again it's I hate being lonely thank you Bobson Doug Nut I know that's fucking hilarious my my dogs do sleep with me on the bed but it's not the same as a human man <laughs> I'm not I'm not really a big fan of Lord of the Rings to be honest with you. I never really got into it. I miss intimacy. That's what it is. I miss intimacy. I know it took two years from my first marriage until I met Andrew and when I met him I was really ready I was really ready to fall in love again and I had a rebound relationship before that where I was not ready and I'm probably gonna have another rebound relationship to be honest with you um but like I just want somebody I know you're telling me not to rush but I'm telling you I probably will rush because of my for my because I am desperate to not be alone. I don't 
think rebounds are bad either if they help you. But I mean, you know, you got to consider the other person too. <laughs> I know you say I'm not alone, but once I'm not streaming anymore and I don't have anybody to talk to and it's late at night, it feels very lonely. That's my hardest time is at night because that's when I would be with Andrew, you know? So it's really hard. And then I just start thinking about like, he must be laying in bed with her right now. He probably has his arm around her right now. And I'm alone. And I'm alone and I want him and I love him and he chose somebody else. And it's really hard. That's why I have to take medicine at night to make myself go to sleep or I'll never be able to sleep. Probably cheating on her right now. I don't think he is yet. I don't think he is yet. He will, but I don't think he is yet. <laughs> oh, I know that they're fighting about me. Yeah. You'd rather be alone than be with a cheater? I guess I just have no self-esteem because I wouldn't. I would have rather had been with him than been alone, even after he cheated on me. Am I okay? No. No, I'm not okay at all. I'm very bad. <laughs> Nobody's out of your league? There's a lot of people out of my league. I'm like a four on a good day. You love being alone so much it's hard to date. I'm the opposite. I have I like I have a very anxious anxious attachment style and I like I'm very clingy and needy and stuff, so it's like that's a lot for a lot of for a lot of guys, you know. I'm a lot to handle for most guys. Andrew put up with me for fifteen years, which is really admirable. No, I don't braid my hair. It's too thin. This is pretty much the only thing it can do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'll meet someone and be with him for 50 years until I'm 90. I fucking hope so. Yeah, he started off that relationship built on lies. She will constantly be jealous and insecure. Yeah, she will. I See, I have a problem too, like on the dating sites. I'll see somebody that I'm interested in, but I won't match with them because I think, nah, he's out of my league. He would never date me. So I just keep moving on and I'm having like a really hard time. Do I think mullets are attractive? Oh yeah. Give me a man with a mullet. A mullet and a mustache, man. Woo! Get on in my bed, baby. And he may be distant with her from feeling guilty about you. He may be. I hope he is. Yeah, there's going to be no trust in that relationship. How could there be? How could there be? Joe Dirt. Give me Joe Dirt. Yeah. Yeah, dating is really hard. I know. If I, I, I mean, I could never take him back now. There's no way I could. Not like before when I said that and didn't really mean it like this time. It's, there's no way. Joe Dirt can get it. <laughs> That's the Arkansan in me. <laughs> Maybe.
You know what? Leela Mangelsdorf, you can fuck right off, honey. I don't have a life because my heart is broken and my world is shattered and streaming is the only thing I have, so fuck you. Did somebody ban her? Yeah. You think those last words I said to him will stick with him forever? I hope so. Yeah, I know all that. You need to love yourself and be alone and all that bullshit, but I just want a man. I don't even care. Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you for timing her out. I make you crave Coca-Cola. I love Coke Zero. I know. I don't understand how people expect me to be over one of the worst thing, ex the worst experiences of my life within four months. I don't either. And actually, now we're down to three, two days from the absolute worst of it. So I'm, I'm not going to be doing well for a long time. No, people usually don't like clean, clingy behaviors. It's true. Um, I know that my behaviors are like a lot for a lot of guys. But I have anxious attachment and I that's just how I attach to people. So I gotta find somebody who can fucking put up with that. Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. I think it's gonna take me years to get over this. Yeah, it's going to take me years. I mean, it took me two years to get over my first husband. And I was only with him for five years. And I remember being so fucking lonely and so depressed. When I met Andrew, I was in a dark place. I was so lonely and so depressed. I thought I would never meet anybody. And I met him. He was like a fucking angel. I remember the first time I ever saw him. He was so beautiful to me. He was standing in a, he was standing in my front door and the porch light was making like a halo around his head and it was raining and he was so beautiful to me. <sighs> I'm sorry. God, I know it was a deception, but I do feel like, um, I know he really loved me then. I know he did. I don't think he's evil. I think he's just hurt and broken and flawed. And unfortunately, he hurt me in the process. Alright y'all, well it's 9 o'clock so I gotta go because I have to get up really early in the morning. I have to get the dogs to the fucking boarding place at like 8 a.m. I have to get all my shit together still. I should have done it earlier today, but I was having a really hard time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up this stream here. This was like the hardest stream I've ever had to do. And I I didn't, I didn't even want to admit all this shit. I didn't want to put it out in the world, but it's the truth. What's happening to me, so... <sighs> like I said, you won't see anything from me for like probably the next five days. But when I get back, I'll publish the vlogs from the trip. So, um, I will see you guys. Thank you so much. I'll try to put, po I'll post on Instagram when I can. So if you want to know how it's going and stuff, I'll try to post on there. 
thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for the uh, support. I really appreciate you. Uh, thank you for the super chats and everything. I, I really appreciate it. All right, y'all. Good night. And I will see, like I said, I'll see you in like five days, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Bye.